Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. You can find Fort Worth Roots on all your favorite social media platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, all of them. Social media for TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all of that's Fort Worth Roots. And we do have a YouTube channel. Most of these recordings do have video with them. And you can find them by going to YouTube and searching for Fort Worth Roots. And then go ahead and mark it on your calendar, September 10th. That's a Saturday. The weather is going to be perfect. Fort Worth Roots Podcast is having their 100th episode release party. It's going to be out at Pouring Glory. That is a really badass little venue close to Main at Southside off of Main Street here in Fort Worth, Texas. It's going to be from 1 to 6 p.m. We're going to have a pop-up market that's being orchestrated by Mickey Wendell, the one that puts together the Artful Village. So she's taking care of that. As of right now, we are going to have three bands on uh, the outdoor stage. And if nothing changes, as of right now, we've got Richard Keller with Itchy Richie and the Burning Sensations. We've got Late to the Station with Carrie and Paul Smith. And we've got Max Cusin from The Gray. That will all be there Saturday, September the 10th to play for you out there at Pouring Glory. Scott, the owner of Pouring Glory, is putting together a special menu for us. And he's even talked about doing some discount drink prices. But anyway, you look at it, this is going to be an excellent event. I'm really excited about this. I've had a lot of help from some very incredible people. Joe Guzman's actually going to be there running sound for us. I mean, it's all the connections we've made over the last uh, two and a half years are showing up for this event to make sure that it's a success. And we got a lot more things that we're working the details out on to, to make it even better for you. But I don't like telling you stuff until I know it's for certain. Another one of the things that we're kind of working out, and this is very not in stone yet, but we're going to try to make sure that the majority of you that come out get a t-shirt with uh, the Fort Worth Roots information on it. We're working on designs and funding and all that good stuff. So um, it's going to be a good event. And I am throwing this for you, the listeners. This is a, a big thank you for everybody that's helped us get to the point that we're at now. The show is picking up a lot of steam and it's because of people like you listening to the show. So this is a big old thank you event. So don't forget your thank you. It will be ready Saturday, September the 10th at Pouring Glory from 1 to 6. Like I said, it's going to be great weather. Everything's going to go perfect. There will be no issues. I shouldn't say stuff like that. I'm jinxing the hell out of myself. But with the talent and the help that I'm getting from the amazing people that are supporting the show, this this is going to be a good time. So mark it on your calendar now so you don't forget. I don't want you planning something else on that date. That's the day you got to come out and get your big thank you. Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck is our most recent sponsor. You can find his information at roofingsolutionshauk.com, and that will be in the show notes. They, of course, do every kind of roofing you can think of, commercial and residential. And right now, Darren is currently in the works to try to put together a special incentive program to get you guys to give him a call so that he can come out, take a look at your roof, and just kind of introduce himself. During last week's episode, I told you a lot about Darren Houck and why this is a good fit. But as we move forward, gaining sponsorship for the show, we're looking for people that have an excellent reputation with the community. Somebody that's very highly respected by the people that they've worked with. And Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck fits that bill. As we continue to grow the Fort Worth Roots podcast, it's going to be important for us to find sponsorship, but we're not going to just accept sponsorship from anybody that's willing to write us a check. They've got to be somebody that is respected by the community and is invested in helping out our neighbors. North Texas is one of the most awful places for roofs. We've earned that reputation over the years from the hell storms and the high winds and everything else. Right now, we're kind of in between hell seasons, so people aren't thinking about their roofs. But these high temperatures can also play hell on your roof. Still not a bad time to have a qualified, trusted roofer from your local community come out there and take a look at the thing that's covering your most valuable asset. For all of you homeowners that have already gone through a hailstorm or something similar here in the North Texas region, you know that when something happens like that, you're going to have a hundred roofers cruising up and down your street, knocking on doors, driving you nuts, driving the animals crazy. So before something goes wrong, go ahead and save this phone number so that you got it in your phone and you know exactly who to call next time there's anything going on with your roof. Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck is 817-882-6520. And that will be in the show notes along with their website, which is roofingsolutionshauk.com. And a big thank you to Darren and Tanya Houck for supporting the Fort Worth Roots podcast. 
And we've got two new sponsors to tell you about. Again, I've mentioned this in the past. The Hauk family has been nothing but supportive of the Fort Worth Roots podcast. And to maintain that theme, our next sponsor to tell you about today is Hauk Walker Originals. You can find them at HaukWalker.com. And it's also Hauk Walker Originals on Facebook. Owned by David and Angela Walker. They both have creative original ideas that end up on this website. On here, you'll find things like customized pens, bowls, flasks, tumblers, wine tumblers, beverage holders, and an entire collection that features items for the home, cutting boards for the kitchen, coasters for the living room, or wine box for the dining room. I've caught David out at Arts Goggle. I've caught him at the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show with his wood turning equipment where he makes tops and bowls and things like that out at these events. Anyway, check them out. David, Angela, thank you for supporting the show. That's Hauk Walker Originals, and you can find them at HaukWalker.com. We also want to welcome Woodpost Metalworks, another sponsor for the Fort Worth Roots podcast. Woodpost Metalworks specializes in metal signs with or without LED backlighting, fence and gate repair, uh, as well as installation, light steel fabrication, industrial plasma cutting, and more. You can check them out on Facebook as Woodpost Metalworks, or you can go to their website at woodpostmetalworks.com. And you should check out this website because it's incredible what a locally owned family business can create with their plasma cutter. This stuff is wild. My favorite thing that I've seen so far, I was out at Art Goggle, and they had a booth set up, and they had this like three foot tall T-Rex thing. And it looks like it's put together in pieces, but they got the thing welded together and then painted. It looks like you could pull it apart, pack it in a box, and take it with you, but it's one solid piece. This thing was this thing was kind of a showstopper. People were coming by and taking pictures with it and things like that, but they made it themselves. Mickey Wendell and her husband are the ones that own Woodpost Metalworks, and we did an episode with them recently. That was episode 89, and it's tagged The Artful Village with Mickey Wendell, Darren Houck, and special guest Mark A. Nobles. But we talk a little bit about Woodpost Metalworks in that episode. We also talk about The Artful Village, which is... Something that we're going to start getting involved with and bringing out the Fort Worth Roots podcast to these little pop-up markets and interacting with the public, which we've done a little bit already, but we want to do that a lot more. I'm thinking about taking Fort Worth Roots to these pop-up markets and car shows and things like that on a semi-regular basis, just because I like getting out there and actually meeting people. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Go to woodpostmetalworks.com. Basically, if you need a sign for your business or you're trying to come up with an awesome gift idea, or maybe you just need some decor for around the house. So check them out again. That's woodpostmetalworks.com. All right, that covers it. Thank you, Woodpost Metalworks. Thank you, Hauk Walker Originals. And thank you, Roofing Solutions by Darren Hauk. Thank you all for sponsoring the Fort Worth Roots Podcast. Our two guests today are part of the local DFW Taiko band, Goisagi. Both are educators. One is a high school art teacher. The other is a librarian as well as an author and indie filmmaker. You can find them most Sundays from 9 to 11 where they practice inside the Trinity River Park just off of I-30 across from the Botanical Gardens. You can find them on YouTube under G-O-I-S-A-G-I dot D-A-I-K-O. That's also their Gmail, gosagi.daiko at gmail.com. And on Instagram, it's also gosagi.daiko. I had a chance to run out there today and catch them just real quick while I was doing my editing. Just took a little quick break, shot out there, caught a video. And if you're watching the YouTube version of the Fort Worth Roots podcast, you'll see what I'm talking about. Also, there's going to be two songs that they provided me with that I'm going to play for you at the end of this episode. This is incredible stuff. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't heard this kind of music uh, from a Tycho group, this is going to be a real treat for you. My two new friends were a lot of fun to talk to. I'm looking forward to having them back on the Fort Worth Roots podcast. Remember to stay tuned to the end for their music, and then their show notes are going to be chocked full of links and uh, YouTube links that you can click on and check out more of their artwork. They do have two events coming up that I'm waiting for details on. As soon as I get that, I'll share it with you on the Fort Worth Roots Facebook page, and I'll add it to the show notes. All right, that's enough talking out of me. Please give it up for our guests today, Kenna Sosa and Sean Ibanez. Thank you all for being here, and let's start the show. Thank y'all for doing this. Y'all found me probably on one of the music groups, Facebook groups or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, we set this up. And honestly, I, uh, I I did a little bit of research and I wasn't quite sure what we were getting into here today. <laughs> but then after going through your photos today, I realized that I think if it wasn't y'all, it was somebody else that does something very similar. 
but they were set up at the the big park across from the botanical gardens oh yeah that's awesome. out of a van and they were they had these huge drums and they were just going to town and they were so <laughs> vibrant and full of life and <laughs> and i was with a friend of mine and i said i gotta go talk to them <laughs> and she said please don't bother them <laughs> and i said i really really want to talk to them she said well if they're there when we come back because we were walking the trail mm -hmm. then then you can go talk and y'all were gone Oh. And I was heartbroken. But the, you know what? Here's the universe working out. So thank y'all so much for reaching out to me. Let's start with uh, the, the origin of your story. How did, how did you guys get to connect? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where are you from? Let's start there. Actually, that's yeah. funny too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the universe. Um, yeah. We're actually both originally from San Antonio, as is one of our other core members <laughs> as well. Jay up there on the left. And we all ended <clears> up <throat> here. And I don't know how many years ago, over 10 years ago, we were members of a, a different Tycho group. And that's how we met originally and developed our skills and our love for Tycho. And, you know, life just kind of leads you off in different directions. Right. And then at one point, well, 2015, more or less. 13. Well, 13. <laughs> Sean had decided to found his own group, okay. and um, he wanted something original, something that, that was his. And so the first person who jumped on board was me. I was awesome. ready. Um, you know, he's so skilled and so talented, and, and I wanted to try something new and to up my game, too. And so for a while, here we were in Fort Worth, just the two of us. You know, we played some marathons, we played some schools, but... You know, you saw what we do. It's big and powerful sound. And between two of us, there's only so much you can do dynamically with two right. players. That's immediately what I thought of is it looked like something you would need four people for. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But the great thing was at that time, because it was just the two of us, we could work on developing some of the songs. And a lot of the songs grew from the experience of, of playing off of each other. Right. While in the meantime, we waited for fate to happen, and our other two core members joined us, Chris and Jay, around that time, and we were the fantastic foursome. And what year was this? Oh, oh. gosh. <laughs> it, was, it was almost three years before <laughs> Chris joined, and yeah. then Jay joined the next year. So. And so the genre is, did you say taiko? Mm -hmm. Yes. How, how do you frame taiko? What, what is taiko? Taiko is Japanese drumming. Uh, percussion. It's ensemble drum. percussion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, it It's grown from uh, traditional Japanese percussion roots. And you'll hear a lot of people say it's automatically traditional Japanese drumming. And there's... Mm. It's not because it takes takes the, the roots from hundreds of years ago and it, and, and it combines it with... Um, contemporary jazz roots and it, and it really kind of came into being in the 40s and 50s so alongside jazz and world war ii and you know internment camps and 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 all of that i was and about to say japanese traditional music was probably not too welcome during world yeah. war ii <laughs> so um to to bring the community together a taiko really started to expand and then because of the music at the time and a lot of the percussionists who started it at the time it, it took uh, those jazz kind of improvisation roots and combined it so a lot of what you see today is is uh ensemble groups with a lot of soloing and a lot of choreography um and i'm i'm very simplifying it it's, it's way more complicated sure, than that sure. um I it will tell you this, if you're walking through the park in Fort Worth and you see something like that, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're going to stop in your tracks and go, what the <laughs> hell is that? That's incredible. What are they doing? Like, are they doing this for free? Is there an event? What's happening? <laughs> right. Well, that that's the great thing about practicing in the park is we've gotten a lot of gigs that way. Oh, I'm um, sure. A lot of you, connections. That that we, we almost connected that day yeah, from you, you should, playing in the park. should come by. I tried. <laughs> my, my, my handler was like, no, don't bug them. And, and, you know, honestly, that's, that's how we recruited our last couple of new members. We've had some new members join us um, the past year, basically a year and a half. Year and a half, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how we found them as well, is just being there and being present and being outdoors and letting our sound ring and yeah. seeing who, who it brought to us. Yeah, we've had people tell us that they can hear us. In the garden. In the gardens. <laughs> I'm sure. Like at the top, where the like the top of the rose garden mm -hmm. and everything, uh -huh. and then all the way down at the other end, um, where like Dream Park is at, they can hear us. So do y'all play there pretty frequently? We're there every Sunday from 9 to 11 practicing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We don't have a uh, studio because 
Money. You don't need one. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> and that's true too. I mean, now that we've found, you know, that we can hang out under the bridge when it rains or snows or you know hails or whatever else, <laughs> we have a place to practice. Is that the bridge you're days. talking about right there in the park? Yeah, I thirty. Where yeah. the train passes yeah. through. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The little, the little tot train. Yeah. 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 Have y'all ever ridden on that thing? I have actually. <laughs> have you really? Oh, with Olivia. <laughs> yeah, I have a seven year old. Well, one time Olivia was on there and the thing derailed, so they <gasps> had to like walk back. Oh my God! So <laughs> so nothing violent. No, I mean it moves like five miles an hour hour you know <laughs> right but it, any train yeah. derailing it's right. not good yeah. it's how it goes places yeah. we used to practice in the gazebo though right there and it was funny okay. because mid song the train would come by and oh, just blast, blast. Yeah. And, we, and I was like man if we record that's going to have to be part of the song yeah <laughs> I have to plug that in somehow noise or else it just won't feel the same <laughs> just just have it, have it on a button yep <laughs> or, or invite the guy out in his overalls and he can blow a train whistle <laughs> you get to start the show <laughs> right. I've done it too. For our listeners that uh, don't know at all what we're talking about, there's a small train. Well, I say small. I mean, it's miniature, but it's got probably... It's got six cars on it. Mm-hmm. It's more than that, right? Is it? Wow. I think it's like 15 or 20. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? I'm not really sure how long it's, it is. I mean, it's a pretty good size, and it goes all the way from, I guess, north of the zoo, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then it follows the Trinity River. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. goes... All the way up to 7th Street. Yeah, it goes and then back down. under I-30 and then back to 7th Street. And then it's not a unscenic route. I mean, there's trees and there's mm. the park and the river. And, and it goes over the river. Yeah, It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So, and I think it's, I don't know. I want to say it was like 10 bucks. I don't remember. It's been it's, it's pretty a cheap. while. It's pretty cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but if you miss the train, you miss the train. He ain't waiting. No. <laughs> that no. dude is. You've got to come back later. You might be able to <laughs> run and catch him, though, if you're a fast Yeah, kid, it's really not a fast train. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he might have some type of uh, implement for people trying to... Okay, I don't know what it would be. Well, we'll I'm have not, to try it. I'm not implying any violence would be encouraged. Sharp stick. But, yeah. <laughs> Big sticks. <laughs> but that that's a cool thing. And, and to just kind of stumble upon that, you're like, what? Yeah, it's pretty odd. So, <clears throat> But we'll have to uh, address that. Next time I'm over there, I'm going to go up to the ticket booth and be like, hey, look, if you see some folks... <laughs> Playing some Japanese drums, you need to just kind of, you know, <laughs> Relax no on train the horn. horn. Yeah. <laughs> but y'all, y'all probably have a lot of ambient noise. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Cars passing, <laughs> oh, people yes. laughing, homeless people mm. screaming. Uh, homeless people, we've only ever had one <laughs> issue. One. <laughs> one. Yeah. 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 Not super bad down there. No, not at all. We did mm. The best one, one time we were playing and it was like in a, a very specific low volume part of a sound so you know we're making noise and then it goes down and then this truck came by um with a bunch of horses in it and the horse neighed right at the right moment (laughs) and we all just laughed because it was such perfect it just fit yeah yeah oh i wish that was part of our song (laughs) (laughs) i don't know about that (laughs) (laughs) it's very fort worth Fort Worth, absolutely (laughs) yeah so from san antonio to here did did we already cover this how did y'all make it here what brought you to the area Oh, did when we? did you come here? 2001. I was I just graduated from the university and I was living in Mexico City and I was looking for a job to come back to the States and I wasn't really having any luck in San Antonio. So mm-hmm. Dallas had jobs and so I said, why not? And I came here and now it's been two decades and now it's home. And you were just, you were teaching in Mexico City? Yeah, I was teaching English, uh, okay. ESL or EFL in that case to adults. Right. Um, and now, like Sean, I think Sean mentioned earlier, we both work in education. So I'm still in education now. I'm a school librarian. Okay. Currently in Irving. Okay. So you're all over the place. Yeah. You got friends everywhere. <laughs> yes. She is definitely our PR person. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. <laughs> so every every Sunday, uh, now do you have to load up your individual drum and make the trip from Irving all the way down to Fort Worth? <laughs> Well, no, that's I, my job. Yeah, <laughs> we, our members. I mean, Sean lives here in Fort Worth, but our members do kind of live all over the Metroplex. Um, so Sean, about two years ago, maybe got this trailer to where finally, yes, he can have room in his vehicle and actually move and breathe while he drives over. Nice. Um, so it's cool. You probably saw the trailer with the great big Goisagi emblem. On yeah, it. Th- you know the 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 drumming and the music is what really stuck <laughs> in my yeah. g- got in my head and stayed there. Uh, what you were driving didn't really, <laughs> but I I did see your symbol while I was trying to unfortunately not 
successfully pull up Instagram on this large TV here. I've got to figure that out. That's <laughs> annoying. So, yeah. So for the folks listening that weren't in the room watching me panic, I was trying to pull up <laughs> something. And the best pictures are on Instagram. How how do they find your Instagram? Um, it's it's, it's well the same way I did it. It's G O I A. I'm sorry. G O I S A G I, and that pulled it right up. Yep. Yeah, y'all, y'all have a yeah. very unique one. name. Yeah. If you if you just Google Goisagi, you're gonna find mostly us, and then some images of a bird, I which we're say, yeah. named which after. Name. So. Goisagi, Japanese something or other. Yeah, uh, sagi means uh, t- t- heron. That's basically. right. Yeah, yeah, so Goisagi is night heron. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. on page two. <laughs> Everything else, you're, you're you're all of page one. The heron got page two. Yeah, and let's yep. face it. Sorry, heron. Nobody looks at page <laughs> <Sorry>. two. <laughs> and it's just like one very specific uh, Japanese night heron. This is a funny little brown bird. It's but a good looking bird. It's over here. Well, and so the reason I chose that name for the group is because over here the night herons. We have these uh, yellow crowned night herons, which are still kind of funny little birds. They're not like the big blue ones. Uh, but they have these three little things coming off the back of their head that are yellow, and so that's that's where our logo comes from. And, and okay, yeah, there's a whole backstory. Uh-huh. And this this is part of your logo here. Uh, or no, just that's for just the drawing I did. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so if y'all are watching the, the no, our logo is actually on the back. Oh, mm-hmm. there you go. Yes. So that black and I'm, white I'm showing the this little. I'll I'll put a copy of this on the uh, YouTube version, but I'm I'm also putting it up to the camera so you can see it. That's their logo. And then this on the uh, other side. This is your album art for a light. That's our first album. This is your first yes. one. Yeah. It was That's just awesome. released in April. That's right. I saw this the year. So yeah. Yeah, we'll do, another one. do another one next year. Where's the best <coughs> place that they can go to get this? Ooh. Uh, well, one of our performances. <laughs> per, hey, live okay. is always <laughs> best. I would point out, though, oh, yeah. that we do have copies currently at Top 10 Records um, in Oak Cliff, okay. at Growl Records in Arlington, and also at Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie. Okay. So if you can't find us live or just shoot us a message and we'll figure it out directly, yeah. um, you can go to one of those stores I and they should have a copy. I can't wait to listen to this. That is so cool. Yeah, just, I mean, the the little bit that I saw today trying to feverishly do some research on you and then hearing y'all play in the park, I know it's going to be very, very powerful. Yes. It's going to be incredible stuff. And <laughs> so it's all live cuts. So. Where, where do y'all, and is a lot of this uh, <laughs> recorded there in the park then? Oh, no. <laughs> so? Were, so we were talking about noise earlier. It's insanely loud. I mean, the number yes. of cars that, you know, <clears throat> play loud music or try to tear mm-hmm. out from the university light. To oh, yeah. Nowhere. You got and, to, right? Yeah, and sirens. Yeah. For some reason. Else. Yeah. Oh, sirens, yes. <laughs> and all the trucks with uh, pulling trailers for cattle and, <laughs> and horses and everything. And dogs yeah, barking. Dogs no. barking. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we don't record there. <laughs> yeah. So where did you do your recording? Um, one of the pieces on there is a solo piece that I did a couple of years ago. It's called Lani Akea that I um, did with uh, Tanner Landry out of, uh, it used to be... Fort Worth Sound? Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's changed names since then. Uh, and then the rest of it we did. Jay up there on the left mm. uh, is a recording engineer. Yep. Okay. So... Yeah, he that works out. Yeah, yeah. So we all went to Kenneth's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yep, in Irving. Oh, and Grand, Grand, Grand Prairie. Prairie yeah. Grand Prairie. <laughs> why? Why was I thinking Irving? Because I That's work in Irving. Oh, you work in Irving. <laughs> okay, okay. So yep. Grand Prairie, not too far. Yep, made my neighbors <laughs> mad. Actually, none of them complained. They never said anything. So hmm. that's what they get now. I guess we'll go do it again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was Sunday morning after, I think we started at like 11.30. This, Something like that. So. Is this yeah. in the garage or? Oh, no, oh, living no room. my living room. <laughs> living room, okay. <laughs> Just pushed all the furniture out of the way. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep, and Jay set up and did his magic. And, That's you know, we're awesome. really fortunate to have people not only with musical talent, but very distinct talent otherwise outside mm. of music, like Jay's recording talent, Sean's artistry, and... You know, he builds a lot of our drums as well, and I bug people <laughs> <laughs> to get us onto places That's and get us awesome. gigs. And Chris up there is also very talented at making merch. Okay. So pretty much any merch that we have other than the CDs is stuff that Chris has made herself. Um, so she's made us anything from, you know, Yeti cups to stickers to um, laser cut our wood keychains. Yeah, our shirts. Yeah. Um, mm. So she's insanely talented That's as awesome. well. Yeah. yeah. And she's an engineer. Yes. So. <clears throat> y'all, y'all have got an inside scoop on everything. 
That's so actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've gotten really lucky because there's, there's three other people, uh, mm -hmm. Maori, there's uh, Katie, Katie, and then um, Chris, Fallon. Yeah. Yeah. And they all have different backgrounds too. And so. Mm -hmm. So everybody really, it's so awesome because they, they all bring something. Like yeah. Mary, she, um, she does a lot of organization with events. And so she's now our, pretty much our crew person, like. We have a lot of equipment. Oh, so yeah. a lot of times when yeah. you see us practicing, we have some of it out. Right. But that's not the whole collection. Like, I don't know if you saw the really big Odaiko that we have that's up on a tall stand that has our emblem. I don't know if you'll have that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot Probably of times not. we don't have It was have pretty practice. windy for a while there. And yes. wasn't putting it that, up. that would not have been good. Um, but we have a ton of equipment. Mm -hmm. And it fills the trailer, and there's got to be a structure to it, or else it's just madness. And so when she came on board, it was great because she had that background of <laughs> organizing and loading and and yeah, doing it all in such a yeah and we were nice. like oh hallelujah you are <laughs> our loading person now <laughs> and we're all going to listen to you <laughs> and so everybody's just come with with something new to contribute and that's really helped us a lot yeah absolutely and so you made the drums <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how does one go about that these are not you know snare drums these are the giant snow. drums yeah. these are oh, huge and it's all it's all looks like one piece of wood is what it looks like it it should be um so traditionally yeah they're they're made from an aged hollowed out log um that's pretty difficult to pull off here uh not impossible but i mean you know you can go from 20 degree winters to 105 degree summers right. uh, in yeah. a couple of weeks <laughs> it seems or days yeah really i mean <laughs> you know it just depends on what texas wants to do uh today and so <clears throat> yeah a lot of uh because it's it's harder for people to do that and because it's it's expensive to get traditional uh traditionally made taiko from japan um, I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. And then to ship, it's even more. Mm -hmm. So is taiko, is it also a wood? No, uh, no. Just a ta oh. Taiko uh, is Japanese for drum. It means, oh, yeah, okay. it means wide body drum mm -hmm. or fat okay. body drum. Yeah. Um, I thought it was just specifically the genre, but I'm learning yeah, here. It, so we're in the learning tree. Yeah. <laughs> tree of trust. Um, so, yes, a lot of groups over here didn't have access <clears throat> to... Um, order and have stuff shipped from Japan. So they had to learn to convert things like wine barrels and whiskey barrels. Okay. Okay. And basically, or like once, once people got very deeply into it, they could figure out how to stave construct, build their own barrel that wasn't, you know, used for alcohol or anything. And right. they could be a little more stabilized. And so, yeah, I built stave constructed drums. Um, we were talking about kind of where we came from before. I moved up here to get my master's degree at TCU okay. uh, in sculpture. <laughs> so constructing and building things mm -hmm. has always been in my uh, in my wheelhouse. And so, so you're a Horn Frog alumni. Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh frog. Oh six. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I came up here in 04, and then I had. You know, li been listening to Taiko since 2001 and then found Dondoko Taiko here in Fort Worth and joined them and wanted to have my own drums and everything. And, and they're very cost prohibitive, no matter like where you get mm. them. You really have to invest. It, it, it <coughs> looks like it must. I mean, because instruments are just expensive. Yeah, just in general. So those <laughs> drums look like they must cost five grand starting. Uh, if you order them, <laughs> yeah, if you buy them from Japan, they generally start, the bigger ones that you see generally start about 4K. Um, so it was a lot. It was easier to kind of spread the money out over time, learning to build them on my own. And so yeah. now... I mean, I would yeah. love to be able to drop, you know, $20,000 to get, you know, traditionally made taiko because they're a whole other, whole other thing. Um, and they're gorgeous. And all the parts are made, you know, with this, this love mm -hmm. and attention. That, well, to that be I fair, the ones do. that y'all are playing on are beautiful. So <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes a lot of work. Um, you know, if you can pack it all down and you can just focus on that, you can get it, you can get one built and three weeks yeah mm. uh, i don't have that kind of like <laughs> devotion i mean i have that yeah. devotion i don't have that kind of time you know i've got so, the kid and so what does it generally <laughs> take him to build one of these things oh he doesn't really tell us when he starts <laughs> yeah, so no. he shows up <clears throat> and he's like oh we have a new this and oh then we wow. all say yeah, yay that, thank yeah. you <laughs> i need to do that again there's a few things i have in the works yeah and, so. and because you brought up uh 
you know, traditional drums. He does build some really beautiful snares too, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And and so do you do you have that going as a That's a separate Instagram awesome. account. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I also could not pull up apparently on this television, which I'm yeah. gonna have to figure out how to fix that. But yeah, I I, saw, <laughs> I, I advertise all of that poorly. Well, well, I mean, we're I'm not the PR oh, person. We're, we're, you know. So <laughs> let, me, let me be the PR person right now. Where, where can people find your, your other side thing with your drums? So building the drums and now blacksmithing and stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Do you I'm, make handbags? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I've got a friend that sells handbags. So I oh, no. couldn't have any kind of cross. Yeah, no, no, no competition. Handbags no. are his territory. <laughs> Sorry, Grant. Um, <laughs> no, um, I'm at Bull and Board. Um, Bull and Board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, like again, on Instagram. I... Uh, I chose that name because originally it was just going to be like kind of, hey, this is how I make Tyco and stuff. And then I started started building snares because I've been a kit player for like... Less material too, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. But like <laughs> somehow, somehow, because of all the hardware, like j almost as expensive to build. Like wow. it's just Yeah, it's ridiculous. Of course, I mean, you know, with COVID and everything, the cost of materials just went Unbelievable. through the roof. Yeah, so I haven't yeah. built anything in a while. Um, not like that anyways. Um, but yeah, my snares are there. If you dig deep enough, you can see the snares, uh, and you can see the Tyco that I made and then try Very to cool. repost things. But like a lot of it right now, just, uh, with the past school year has been trying, like trying to show my students work or like what I'm working on with my students and mm -hmm. in the art classroom. So that's awesome. <laughs> and it's awesome that you're both educators. That's, uh, speaking of COVID, that's been a tough, uh, Industry, unreal. I don't know if yeah. you call that an industry, but <laughs> the line of work that you're in is yeah. uh, difficult. How are the kiddos handling it? Uh, as far as what you've seen at your school district, um, well, I actually switched from Dallas ISD the year COVID hit was mm -hmm. my last year and switched to Irving. So, you know, we had that hybrid thing where we had the kids in front of us and the kids on a computer. And I'm a librarian. And so I was hauling like shelves full of books with me and two monitors and going like this down the hallways. And it was, it was madness. And I was, you know, hurting myself. But the kids that, that are at my school were just so gung ho and excited still. And I was like, I can't lose my, my joy right now while they still have it. Right. But this year that they all came back, it was just amazing. I, I know it was a tough year and there was a lot of adjustment and there was a whole lot of work and a whole lot of catching up, but the kids that I worked with are phenomenal and they were just so happy all of the time. So it was like, okay, really? yeah, yeah, I can still do this. I can still show up happy every day and That's high awesome. five and tell people I love them and hug them. And, but you know, I live with, I, I work with little ones though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At the high school level, it's quite different. But yeah, I, I, I work with elementary. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah there'd, there'd be a dayline yeah. story but about you, sir. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Hugging high school day, kids. So. Yeah. <laughs> I like my personal space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that too, but you know. <laughs> so it's it's a different, it's kind of oh, a different yeah. world. Like the little 100%. ones, they, they don't really know better a lot of them because there's they are little, so they're pretty resilient. They yeah. bounced back, and they were just so happy to be there and to be back. So this has been a good year. Um, it was it was tough in a lot of ways, but I, it wasn't in the way that where I thought, okay, it's time to give up. Yeah. You know, it was still a good thing to be back. Well, it's good to hear you say something positive about it because, you know, last year, whenever education would come up, it was pretty grim. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you've ran into these really cool cats, Paul and Carrie Smith of Late to the Station, mm -mm. local musicians, but uh, they were educators. And we were talking about this. And they're no longer educators, but we got on the subject of resiliency and how these mm -hmm. kids are going to deal with all the changes that happen to, you know, the the kiddos in a certain age group going through two, two and a half years of the worst social stuff that... Weirdness. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How's that going to affect them? And de de what's going to happen to their developmental stages or whatever? And Yeah, I think there was a, a massive amount of worry. And, and I think the, the terminology that got thrown around the most was, you know, they're, that they're going to be behind yeah and well i mean i mean mathematically you would think i i, I, I kind of get it but like you know if you look at the entire spectrum of students they were all behind you know so before covid 
No, 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 no. I mean, because of COVID, like you know, they because they, of our yeah, they all missed standardized the, testing methods. Oh god, that's oh. a whole other story. <laughs> I don't even know that I can talk. We, we about don't. That. No, we don't have to. Yeah, we, we don't have to. That's that. a bad word. Yeah, no, yeah. we don't talk. About okay, that. sorry. Well, uh, what I will say though is they they went into COVID at least at the little ones' age. Um, without a whole lot of technical skills. And right. so while they may have gotten behind in certain other uh, faculties, they grew <laughs> leaps and bounds and they're tech savvy. Like the things that they can do at elementary level are things I could never have imagined elementary kids being able to do now. Yeah. Until now, because of that, because they were thrown into that technological realm and they're researching and making websites and, you know, they're, they're doing all kinds of things that they wouldn't have done otherwise if we hadn't had COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of prefer to think they, they grew like three years, yeah. just in, in a way that we didn't expect. In a different area. Yeah, yeah. so we can catch up on the rest later. Yeah, but like they didn't do nothing that whole right. time. Like They right. still grew. They still learned. They still had different experiences. It just wasn't what we had planned out for them. Yeah, yeah. and, and that's, that's a really good perspective. I feel like Carrie might have said something like that. Like there's there's different things that we're not expecting to mm -hmm. come out of this, and we won't know the full results until right. 20, 30, 40 years right. from now. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I've never felt like they were going to be behind. Mm -hmm. Like because I mean everybody from kindergarten to to that senior year that that didn't get a graduation, you know, cuz nobody could be in person. Uh everything took a pause for sure right. and we didn't really we couldn't teach the way we wanted. We couldn't teach certain things because of like I'm an art teacher. It was so insane to try to teach any of that over the internet. Because you can't be there to help anybody. Right. Like, ninety nine percent of my job is walking around <laughs> the classroom and talking to individuals for an hour and a half. Yeah, like that's what I do. Is like help them one on one. So and they're not even logged in the entire time. You know, right. so so that was you know crazy. So did you kind of transition into like <clears throat> teaching art theory and kind of more of the literature portion of art, or were you actually yeah. able to teach an art class online? I f I. Did you Bob Ross it? No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> were there a lot of happy little trees? <laughs> no. There were some people who were like, can we just watch Bob Ross videos? And I was like, oh, man, come on, y'all. Um, as much as I love Bob Ross, you know, like, yeah. no, I, I really try to focus, and I've always tried to focus on getting my students uh, skills that they can use at home. Like, I mean, if I paint, I do oil paint. You can't use oil paint in the classroom because mm. it's toxic, right? Right. And yeah. so, also, these kids are not going to afford that. Um, right. So, so it needs to be publicly funded in order for them to do what you want to do with them. Well, and I need them. Yeah, I need them to be able to do this, do this stuff at home um, yeah. because nobody was coming up to get materials or anything. And, and so it was just complicated in a number of ways. But I've always focused on like trying to give people skills that they can do at home. So every kid has a cell phone. So do photography stuff. And then, mm. hey, here's these platforms we can use. Um and I can show you how, but... So you learned some things you didn't know you were going to learn that school year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, we did, if we didn't adjust in some way, shape, or form, there was no way to, you know, mm -hmm. expect anybody else to adjust. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's... A lot of um, good has come out because of that. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, educators that had to adjust to catching up with things, catching up with technology. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people, like I don't, because I, I teach art, there wasn't a lot of technology, like they always want technology in the classroom, right? And there mm. is technology in the classroom, but I don't focus on having tablets and things like that. And most of the places that I've taught have never had the, the budget to get every kid a tablet anyways, you know? Um, and that's sort of something that actually changed for the better mm -hmm. uh, with with COVID happening because kids had to have their own laptop they could take back and forth. And in this case, it was touch sensitive. So suddenly we could do these digital projects mm -hmm. and they could, you know, try to draw on the screen and do stuff like that. And so um, it kind of caused, yeah, it caused a lot of people to, to look at what they had, what their students had a lot more closely and try to troubleshoot uh, yeah. and be a lot more creative about how they could fix things. That's um, cool. Yeah, and I'm not going to say oh, that always went well. <laughs> I mean, no. Like, no, but, but you know. <laughs> but what you're saying is it gave a unique experience that would not have been there had COVID not happened. Yeah. And nobody is saying that COVID was a it's good thing. It's not a good thing. But no. yeah, right. you you are trying to reiterate that, you know, it wasn't a loss. You know, they they didn't lose 
uh, they had to refocus yeah mm-hmm. and to go a different path absolutely so yeah mm-hmm. i love that i'm i'm, I'm glad because i i know that for myself and a lot of people that i've talked to that the fear is that um we just lost two years of education to these yeah. kids it's not like everybody went to bed I, I did. And I even slept then. a lot. <laughs> so, okay. That Especially was actually. Especially when I got COVID. Yeah. I slept a lot oh, yeah. when I had COVID. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a lot of people's reactions, though. It was like, uh, we got very, very. Um, I mean, despite the fact that we couldn't be around a lot of people, we got very uh, emotionally taxed by being in a very new social mm-hmm. dynamic. And yeah. a lot of that was just staring at a screen. Like, yes. for anybody out there who has to stare at a screen all day as part of their job, I'm so sorry. It sucks oh, yeah. the life God, out of you. God, it kills you. Right? Yeah, yeah it, you have no energy. And all you did was sit. And, like, and, and, and then you're like, I got to go to sleep. I mean, I was going to bed at like eight, yeah. eight thirty. I feel like we were just kind of a good term. I feel like is just socially depressed. Like everybody mm. yeah. was just kind of in the state of, it's it's gonna be over someday. Like let me yeah. let me just get through this shit and then I can resume my life. Yeah, and, and it just dragged. <laughs> the one thing that I noticed more than anything, driving down the street and seeing the trash bags in front of houses just full of liquor bottles and oh. beer cans. Oh yeah, so drinking up went up. up. Yes. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, and liquor stores, I mean, they did really well. <laughs> I'm just going by the stuff I saw in people's front yards. I don't know for sure, but um it 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 seems like there were a lot of things and I I think there's going to be some textbooks and movies and well, Mark Wahlberg is going to do a few really bad films and <laughs> it's all going to be Only about covid. Yeah. Are they going to be transformer <laughs> movies? No, they're going to be they're going to be 29 Jurassic Park movies. Oh, That's what they're going to be. Are we already in the double digits for that? <laughs> I thought this was the last don't, one. Don't, don't get me started on the remake. Are y'all going to see the newest one? No. Jurassic yes. Park. I have a seven-year-old. Okay. I have to. Uh, we're going to go see it probably around December because okay. I got to get to all the other ones first. Jurassic Park. Spoiler alert: It's not that bad, but it, <laughs> it's 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 the ratings that I'm getting from friends on the interwebs, and uh, it it's bad. It's real yeah. bad. Awesome. But it's because we've told that story. And <laughs> yeah. You know, I I started learning about filmmaking and and writing and directing and producing my own short films uh-huh. since 2019, and that's been a big beef are you I into has. indie filmmaking yeah awesome <laughs> yeah cool. i have a few <laughs> um we gotta talk about that <laughs> and just the, the fact that, that it seems like the majority of what's out there right now are remakes or mm-hmm. sequels and, God, and yeah. trilogies and you know the, uh, there's not even a word for like the seventh film in a series as far as i know but Except why trilogy. why are we recycling somebody the told me they're trying to cash in on nostalgia they are but you can't take art and make it business because you lose the soul of art and right now it feels like mainstream film has lost the soul of creativity and become literally just a cash cow and i mean like you said yourself this is what number of jurassic park and it's not that good but well they haven't where's the other stories where are the other stories there's so many creative like you've you've met a bazillion musicians just in this area Mm -hmm. there's a huge number of extremely talented people everywhere i keep meeting them yeah, yeah, like, like you, yourself. <laughs> you, I get amazed by people I meet all the time, and I'm like, wow, I wish I was as talented as you. This is amazing, and how come I can't find your stuff with that audience? And it's, I, I don't know, I think because it's being run by business as opposed to run by artists who have business skills, that that's what we're we're finding, and I would really love to see some new voices and very specifically some new plot lines coming along in the near future. What, what is the, uh, there, there's some kind of, Somebody was trying to explain this to me, and it's somebody's principle that there can only be 36 actual plot lines. You know what 31. I'm talking about? 31? <clears throat> yeah. What it's it's broken down into like... Uh, it, is it made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> so I agree with you, because now, like, since I heard that, I'm like, well, how many could there be? Like, the, the different things that you could entertain your mind with, like different tr- dramas or mm. plots or whatever. So the, so the thirty, the 31 is, is there's, there's three different takes on it. And it's been a long time since I've read this. So I'm sorry, audience. <laughs> um, but if I remember right, it's 31, like 13 and then like nine or something like that. And it gets more general as you go down in, in the, in okay, the number. Okay. So, so the these are real broader general. umbrellas, yes. like the 31 and then you start filtering down or uh, the other way, way around. around. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. So like, you know, it's, it's, it's stuff like, uh, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, 
uh, boy gets girl back. Yeah, and like, <laughs> and then it branches off like into two different things, you know. And then you have you know all your monsters and alien stuff. Well, and wh- what's what's the top one? Where does it all branch from? Is there one or two? Or Probably somebody killed dude's wife and kid and he has to go get revenge. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh, That's another overly used plot well, line. Yeah, seriously. Um, <laughs> the one guy who and can like save the world against everything. Oh, like, yeah. There's, yeah there's oh, but they have to be a teenager. They have to be a teenager oh. if they're saving the world in a post-apocalyptic. Yes. Yeah. yes. You know, uh, it's like that. <laughs> um, Sometimes it'd be like that, yeah. Yeah. There yeah. was a whole, <laughs> there was a whole, uh, the fifth wave is the only one that I can think of but like uh, uh there was that tv series uh, the 100 mm. which i actually right, love 100 i love that show i actually i watched mm. the first season and i was like this is really not what i expected yeah because the first season i was sure i was gonna hate <coughs> yeah as soon as i started i'm like i have nothing else to watch and i pressed <laughs> play and then i watched the full season yeah, it was okay. actually surprisingly good. I need yeah. to go back and watch the rest of the seasons, but I've been watching other things. The, the great thing about, you know, during COVID when we couldn't go to the movies is the streaming services Jeez. started really upping their game. And yeah. that's where you started to see a lot of the really original content with new plot lines or at least a new twist yeah. on an old story that became really entertaining. Like the entertainment factor went up at least as far as, you know, things that Netflix was producing independently. Mm-hmm. And then they produced a lot of, of foreign films too that you know weren't going to get produced otherwise so that's awesome so yeah they they the independent kind of right. came out because we ran out of all the other things well I, I yeah i really enjoyed that and and i think uh to to jump on that one of the a lot of the things that i've watched lately with school winding down and, and with it actually being the summer is all the made for netflix mm. stuff so they there's a uh they did an anime series called um orbital children okay it's it's like most anime just go on forever like so Mm. many episodes and i I don't i can't i can deal with that it's just (laughs) too much but orbital orbital children was a sci-fi like a hard sci anime which in and of itself is like i mean you have to kind of like really pay attention to what they're talking about or Mm. by episode two you don't know what's going on um and so it was it was a really good science fiction anime and and that was surprising you know because most of the time it's like oh we have a warp drive and blah, blah, blah. And then you don't hear anything about the science, but like every bit of science that was in that, like played into the next episode and how everything turned out. And I can see this on Netflix. Yeah. And it was made by Netflix. I should check it out because I'm a huge nerd, but I've never gotten into anime. My intro to anime, correct me if I'm wrong, Cowboy Bebop, is that qualified? That's a really good one. (laughs) I enjoyed the shit out of it. And they canceled it. Oh yeah. And then they canceled the the live action one. Really good. Yeah. Um, Damn it. But then they they did, (laughs) they funded a Korean, um, science fiction show that I thought was hard sci it just ended up being kind of just more science fiction a little less a little less on the science um, The Silent Seas oh was that good Silent Sea it's all subtitle right yeah it's all subtitle okay. I, I, I started it and then I got either I went to bed or I got distracted but I didn't pick it back up but was it, was it worth it because yeah. it does start off really slow it, it's yeah, it, it's definitely built more like a like a hard sci kind of like if if you really loved Alien, okay. you know, like if if you go back and you watch Alien, the first hour and that is hard is science, real, folks. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 that's hard science, <laughs> real hard science. Um, you ever see an egg and it starts cracking open and you're on an right, alien ship? Man, Run! Get, oh, what on, are you doing? Like, don't put your face in it. <laughs> Yeah. What's it smell like? <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about stuff that's been beat to death? <laughs> like, oh, I love aliens. Come on. But we man, can keep it going. God. I mean, yeah. and I don't tell you, I've bought Did you like the new the ones? Books. No, they were terrible. Did you did you see the series <laughs> Raised by Wolves? You know, I you need to watch that. I love what, that. And is that it, on Hulu? I, no. Uh I think it's on HBO. Okay, then I need to watch it because it's also by it's also by Ridley Scott. Because I haven't been a big fan of most of the Alien movies, but that is based off of it, kind of loosely, really? a okay. little bit. Yeah, I'll check it out. And uh, I know it's incredible. F- produced, I guess, produced by him by Ridley Scott somewhere like in his realm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the the androids are they bleed white, and I don't know. Yeah, that, that's about the biggest connection. <laughs> that's about the biggest connection I saw. Nice. But yeah, I need to see that. So I got to ask you. You were talking about how these series have just been beaten to death, and it's just a copy of a copy of a copy. What did you think about what they've done with the Marvel universe? And then uh, oh, there's another really successful franchise I was going to bring up, but so uh, not the DC universe. No, that was not. <laughs> <laughs> no, Marvel for sure. But there, there's been that. another really successful one that's uh, continued for a while. 
but I've blanked on it. But what do you think about the Marvel thing? I mean, they've done a good job of going off in different directions. And tan- oh, the other one was uh, uh, Star Wars. And I'm not a fan mm-hmm. of a lot of the newer Star Wars stuff, but they've done mm-hmm. really good with, you know, this Obi-Wan series is cool. The Boba Fett and mm-hmm. Mandalorian, very entertaining. So they're taking, they're taking the nostalgia and the old, but they're yeah. also splitting it off in different stories. And to me, that's worth watching. But Jurassic Park with the same people over and yeah. over again. <laughs> I, I have more respect for the backstory right. than I do for just a simple remake for a newer audience. Yeah. Because if it wasn't great, then why remake it anyway? It's yeah. already great. You know, yeah. they did, what was it, just, just for a random example, Jumanji. Mm-hmm. You know, there was the Jumanji with Robin Williams, which was great. Perfect. And then they remade it, and I watched it with to give it a shot. Right? And it was horrible. <laughs> it, they tried to update it for a modern audience, yeah. but it was terrible. Like, it, it just wasn't good. Right. You can do a remake and at least make it good, though. You don't yeah. have to just modernize it. That's not what makes it good. It's the story. But as long as it's an original backstory, you know, I'm all for it. There was... um. It's been a while, but the book um, that the Broadway play Wicked is based off of is actually a novel, which it was a great novel, and it's the backstory of the Wicked Witch and how she became the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay. And it's, I don't know if you've read it, because it's been mm. out for a while, but it was a bestseller for a while. Great novel. Great novel. And then they did the Broadway version, and I was like, oh my God i read the book first <laughs> i can't i can't watch this i just can't right because it's know? nothing like the book yeah no <laughs> no but you know that backstory was valid that backstory gave her heart and character and it helped you understand who she was so i think if you if you add more to something that's already great that's okay but you know if you have 30 something movies at this point about the same <laughs> it's plagiarism right in a way <laughs> franchising <laughs> franchising yeah right. they made a business you're kind of like sure. bleeding it dry right, you know yeah. like you're not going to get any more blood from beating this rock and people are just going out to see it cuz it's habit at this point so you can say yes i watched it but are they getting the joy out of it yeah well i know every time like one of the uh movies that i loved growing up whenever they said oh they're going to do a remake or uh, another um iteration of it or Mm -hmm. i would always get really nervous because it happens almost every time you take a classic movie you try to do another uh run through with it and it always falls short you can't take a classic and turn it into something better because that that lives somewhere in our hearts and our minds from younger happier years well and and it's (laughs) i think it's experiential for us because um I watched. I never. I I saw Aliens first in 1987 from behind a couch. Yeah. Okay. And and I say watched. I mean I heard it. Right. Yeah. I didn't really watch it, uh, and it stuck with me, as a. I wasn't. I don't think I was even. I must have been seven. I guess. But um, and that's been like my franchise, for my life. I yeah. mean, like I I've seen and all you of them. Seen I've Raised read, by wolves. I've I just, read the books. I well, I, so I stopped watching TV for a long time. Like I don't, I don't watch TV. Um, all I have is Netflix. Very healthy. And, uh, yeah. You can stop taking extra fiber now, sir. You're yeah. doing your part. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I think it's it's the experience. Um, people talk about you know nostalgia. Like when you see something, is just mm. as impactful as what you see or what you hear, right? So. Um, I, the first first concert I ever went to was Santana. Okay, most really? people, most exactly nice. right. So most people go <laughs> started Damn, at the top. Really, yeah. I know, right? Where do you go from there? And uh, and I was Dave like Dave Matthews. <laughs> I was like, well, so depending on the conversation, the first concert I went to was Rage Against the Machine. Okay, but technically, <laughs> technically, the first thing that I saw that was like a, a band was Santana, because um, I saw him with my parents. But you know, you don't tell anybody that, right? <laughs> And so, like, I was, at the time, I was just like, yeah, okay, that's cool, whatever. Um, I didn't really care about Santana's music, but I'll say this, as a percussionist, like, his back line is unreal. He's got, mm. a, like, two percussionists and a drummer in the back. Like, I don't care about Santana. <laughs> like, Santana can sing, Santana can play. Awesome. Wonderful. Everybody's his, his nodding per- their head right now going, yeah. yeah. <laughs> his percussion line back there is an amazing performance to watch. Everybody's Absolutely dusting unreal. off old CDs like, well, <laughs> let me see. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, at the time it was like, yeah, okay, that's really cool. Like watching those drummers, but I didn't really care about the music, right? <laughs> now, so my first, my, my second one was Rage Against the Machine. That was way more impactful because I was a teenager in high school. Which album? Uh, that was the Evil Empire tour. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh-huh. So then I went backwards and, and, you know, got their first album and then they had a third album and they died uh, and fell apart. <laughs> Yeah. But anyways, yeah. that's a whole other political. And then they story. came. Then political, exactly. They yeah. came back. Got political. Everybody went. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> but um, you know, yeah. So whenever you see something, or whenever you experience it at the right time for it to make that impact on you, it's like, oh, like why would you remake this movie? It's like, yeah, you can't rebuild that experience. You know, you can't. No. I'm never going to have the first Tycho performance that I mm. saw live ever again. Oh, but that's oh, yeah. never the goal, right? We just talked <laughs> yeah. about this. You're not trying to recreate that. Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, no, you can't. Yeah, and I think, kind of to tie all this together, um, one of the one of the things that, that is always, that, that kind of spawned me to make my own group, oh my God, almost 10 years ago now, uh, is the growth mindset. You know, we were talking about COVID and like these kids got left behind or they're behind or whatever. And it's like, you know, that's no, because yeah, again, they had different experiences and all this stuff, but everybody continually moves forward. You know, mm-hmm. the growth mindset is, Oh, I'm, I failed. Oh, well, I still learned. It's not really a failure. It's, it's an, it's, it's an experience. You learn something and you build on it one way or another, whether you want to or not, you're going to build on it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. You absorb that, that experience. And, and despite how bad COVID was and, and educationally or just for everybody or like the stuff that it did to our families and our friends and people that we lost and everything, um, do you know, we had other experiences that, mm-hmm. that have given us opportunities to grow. And, and that's, I mean, going back to Tycho, that's the, totally why I started this group is because I had things that I wanted to do that I wasn't able to do in the groups that I was in. Um, so I just dropped the money and started building my own stuff and, and, and put it together and started writing the things that I wanted to hear. And, and so here we are. I love what you're but saying uh, though. Cause we're, we're, you're talking about the way it all ties in and it's not pass or fail. No, it's not better or worse. It's life. Yeah. And you're going to get something out of it, whether you want to or not. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if, if, yeah, so it's it's <coughs> that mindset is if if you choose to see uh, the things that don't work out the way you expect them to as being directly against you or as a failure that you can't overcome, then yeah, you stop growing, and you see the the negative things that happen uh, or the the bad things that happen to you because it didn't turn out the way you wanted to. You see that in a way that reinforces that feeling. And so, and this is something I try to work with, with my students, you know, obliquely, you know, because you can't just, you can't stand up there and like psychologically break down your students right. and have them listen. Right. Um, Got to bring SpongeBob out. Oh God. <laughs> that is the I'm last sorry. thing that, I That's will very ever condescending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, high school kids from like the year after I graduated, I guess. SpongeBob. Oh no, your kids still, probably don't even know who oh, SpongeBob. Yes, do. do they? Oh, God, SpongeBob yes. is still hip. It's still a meme. Oh yeah, yeah. there's still memes. Out <laughs> there. Memes yeah. will keep things famous. Oh, yeah, talking yeah. about <laughs> nostalgic. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you don't, you know, you, you got to look at everything one way or another. Whatever happens, good or bad, on face value, you've learned something. Yeah. You know? So you kind of have to 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 figure. Well, let me build on this as opposed mm. to just using it to reinforce the negative things that I already think. Yeah. You know, so, um, so that's a good mindset. I yeah. think, I think it really fostered innovation in a lot of ways because that when, when it first happened, that was probably the only time since we've started that we didn't practice for more than a week. Like we've skipped a week before, but we stopped for like a month or something. It was something like that. And then, yeah, right when it first hit, yeah. we were just like, we, we can't we be together. Yeah. Locked down like everybody else, yeah. you know, and and then it just got to the point where we said, okay, but it, like I can't keep going like this. Can you? How yeah. can we do this? And we already had the benefit of practicing outside, but we said, okay, right. we're we can still do this though. We're gonna go to a bigger outdoor area. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna be have our drums six feet apart because we're loud enough to hear yeah, each other. 10, 12 feet. Yeah, yeah and we're st- we're gonna wear our masks the whole time, there which in go. the summer is pretty brutal. <laughs> a little gross. <laughs> yeah, that really wasn't that fun. One-time use. 
yeah. masks. Yes, but not a joke. <laughs> not a joke on those days. But yeah. you know, the, the first Shit. performance that we had after COVID started was top 10 records. They they were doing this no audience series. Um, you remember when the, the mm-hmm. yeah. guy was filming us and there were two Donovan. other groups. Yes. Um, that played before us and then it was us. And so there's nobody in there except Lily who uh, used to work there that, that mm-hmm. did a lot of programs for the area. And we performed and, and like I said, it was us and the camera guy and Lily and that was it. And I was so happy in that moment and it was just, it was like a, a burst because I, I, I missed this Needed so it. much yeah. and it did not yeah. matter that nobody else was there. They were there online. I don't know right. how many people, but they were there online. But it was the fact that we got to play together again. We got to perform and that was all that mattered. And we were so happy that... <laughs> I didn't even care that three out of the four of us got parking tickets when we came by. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> but we actually had, Chris made us custom masks for that. So, like, we had our logo on our masks yes. when we were performing. and <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was like I think a I saw a picture of that. Back. Do y'all yeah. have that on Instagram? Uh, it's on YouTube. Yeah, that one's definitely Maybe that's on YouTube. where I saw it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you um, might have sent me the, because you sent me a, a several links. That might have been probably. one of them. Probably, because that was a good performance. And yeah. it looks really cool, because he shot it with, like, a fisheye lens. Yeah, so, wide. yeah, That's so it looks really cool. cool too. But it was like the a victory of of like telling COVID, okay, like we win. You can't really take this from us. Yeah. You just we just might have to do it a different way. And what a badass way to tell the story through those big, beautiful, bassy <laughs> drums. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, talking about innovation, like a lot of uh, you know, talking about like Netflix and stuff like that had to up their game. But like a lot of these little places, uh, like Top Ten, is is uh, they do a lot of grant writing, mm-hmm. and that performance grant writing, grant writing, mm-hmm. yeah. So they in order to to um, they get government money basically. But oh, you have they're, to, they're oh, okay, non-profit. yeah, grants, yeah, 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 yeah. So they're non pro. <laughs> I was thinking music. Oh no. Uh, so they had to write. You know, this the, that whole mm-hmm. performance series was for this mm-hmm. grant that they had started before COVID hit. And, and they were like, well, we're not really sure what we're going to do, but we'll, we're, we're going to do something. We're getting the money, so <laughs> we're going to figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of these small places started, and I mean, even symphonies, like just started doing these small performances that mm. you would catch online only. And there was a big push to keep the arts alive. Yeah. Um, I remember some of this. Yeah. yeah and it w- and that, it, it was, almost came too late, and for some people, I think it, it did. Really, no, it really yes, did, it and did. a lot of those, a lot of those big groups, you know, had to cut people. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. it's definitely not without its trials and without its its um, its costs, you know. Right. Um, but at least we did something, I guess. Yeah, there's that. We, we stayed alive and and kept pushing the yeah. things that we cared about. Yeah, exactly. And I think for a lot of us, it kind of refocused us on what we really care about the most. <clears throat> yeah, you know. Because we, before it, we were all running around, well, me, I speak for myself, (laughs) he knows I run around like crazy all the time, and I'm doing all kinds of different things, and then that, I was forced to slow down, and as I came out of it, I realized I don't want to run around like crazy all the time, I want to run at a regular speed, so I need to choose, what do I care about the most, and obviously, I'm not giving up on the drumming, like, I don't, I don't think I could at this point, unless I get really injured, but I even played with my dog bite. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Your dog bite? Yeah. You got bit by a dog? I, yeah. I got bit. Um, by Tell a, me it's like a Palmarini or it something. It was a pit bull. Oh, it's a pit bull. Oh, I got God. bit by my friend's pit bull, and it was my right hand. And I kid you not, I didn't cry. I was staring straight ahead, and I thought, oh, God, this is my playing hand. This is my good hand. That's <laughs> dominant. Yeah. We can still be friends if I can get back to playing. But if I can't play anymore, I don't think I can be friends with this friend. And and luckily it was okay, but I had a you know a splint on it to keep it straight because it was right in the middle of my pinky. Did so it break the bone or just no. pierce the tendon? Or no, the dog checked me. We'll call it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he could have done much worse. He he checked me basically, um, but it was ugly. And I had you know I had it wrapped and I had a splint and I had mm. all kinds of stuff for a few weeks. And I went and I said I'm going to be dainty and I'm going to play with my pinky up. Cause that's where I got it the worst and I'm going to play and I oh surprisingly could play okay except when we did big movements my splint kept flying off <laughs> yeah. and after a few times I was like forget it man I'm just going to play like this and everybody can make fun of me but I still get to play and yeah. that just made me happy there you, you choose what makes your heart happy you, you got full range these days I, awesome. I still can't 
do she's, as much as I could, but I mean, but it's she's almost She's touching there. the pad of her pinky all the way yeah. back. It used so to be able to do this. Pretty, now now that's that's a little too much. Look at that. That's this excellent is, This range. is band camp for middle school. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, they made that us one like, there? Yeah, they made us rubber around our fingers because we would play traditional. I'm pretty and sure so, you'd get locked up for that now. What? <laughs> Back no, <laughs> there, yeah, there's a couple of there's a okay. Yeah, so, so band, do that. band and athletics, they can still get away with some <laughs> right. kind of like a little bit on the yeah, yeah questionable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, but no, but that is incredible because your that pinky goes way further back. Yeah, and that's why this one because there's it's not bad actually. There's just a little bit of scar tissue. Yeah, so I can't as much, but it hasn't stopped me. I've been but right you're, back. You're to not it. as much is more than most people's much all you gotta do is put a rubber band around it <laughs> yeah for like and months yeah wow and do what you normally do and after a while you'll be able to pull that Very off cool. <laughs> before we get Brand out of here because we're an hour in i gotta know about this indie filmmaking oh you said you made <laughs> did you say you made three uh i have made three so i have i had to count because i do things i do a lot of things <laughs> Book signings, book writings, editing. Uh, You're an author? Things. Yeah. <laughs> you know we have authors on here too? Oh, I did not know that. We're going to have to do a whole, y'all are going to have to come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably once a week until we get this all squared I'm away. I'm not an author yet. <laughs> yet. See, yet. You'll well, let's, I've let's written it. a lot of stuff, but I'm not an author yet. <laughs> I have too. Nobody wants to read it though. <laughs> That's kind of the way I feel about it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm sure you're much more, most of mine are like banana doodles and oh. <laughs> scary bats and I don't know. You got to go into children's publishing. Yeah. Yeah. We love banana doodles they and have, bats. They, yeah, if you've, I don't know if you have kids, but like if you walk into the kids section at the at a Barnes and Nobles, you will see the broad oh, spectrum yeah. of of what I would say is good drawing and bad drawing. But well, you know, I, mean, I know just, mine would definitely belong on the bad drawing. <laughs> but nobody wants a single uh, guy with no kids walking into the children's <laughs> aisle at Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> You're buying a gift for a nephew. Yes, I mean, there you go. if I was over in the sci-fi at Barnes and Nobles <laughs> and I saw that guy walking into the, ki- I I don't know, I'd say something. <laughs> oh. um, yeah. But it's but all got a niche. <laughs> there's, there's, there's kids love, like kids are. Let me. You were talking about little kids. They, yeah, they, <laughs> the weirder, zanier. Oh like, yeah. yeah, right, right. That's what I love about it. my job is I get to read about weird stuff all day. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, I remember some of the stuff that, like, my mom. Her hard line in the sand was, "We could not watch The Simpsons," but oh, she yeah. let us watch <laughs> Rocco's Modern Life and <laughs> South Park. And I'm like, "Whoa, she, really?" She just doesn't, <laughs> like, we can't watch The Simpsons, but. Rocco, uh, Ren South and Stimpy. <laughs> oh, Ren and Stimpy was the worst. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like as an adult going and watching that stuff now, you're like, how did they get uh-huh. away with half of that <laughs> stuff? Because yeah. yeah. it was originally on MTV, right? No, it was, I think it was no, Nickelodeon. It. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. It, was a Nick, it was a Nick show. Beavis and Butthead was... Oh, that, yes. was MTV. that was MTV. That was MTV, yeah. Yeah. yes. But I, I was with you out there funny. for a second. I thought Ren and Stimpy was too, but you're right. It was Nickelodeon. Really? I, yeah. I saw it on Nickelodeon. Yeah. The, like, with Rugrats and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what was the the sister's name on Rugrats? She traumatized me. I never An- watched. An- Angela? An- oh, Angelica? Yeah. Yes. Angelica. Angelica. Yeah. She was so mean. <laughs> she yeah, was I evil. never watched that show, and I still know who that is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was a bad, bad lady. <laughs> she probably still is. They know? did a remake of that and like and like wrapped up like how they grew up and stuff and there was something about her, but I don't... It was probably terrible. <laughs> no, she, I think she ended up t- like... it. They kind of made her attitude make more sense, maybe. Mm. Was this like live action or? No, it was actually an animated thing. Was it better than Jurassic Park 79? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't watch. I haven't watched either of those. <laughs> All right. First indie film. Happening. Where were you? How did this come about? What's the name of this? Um, well, I okay. I'm mostly a children's author. Okay. So after my first three books and then I work with kids and I just thought, I felt like I wasn't expressing my full voice as a writer. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was looking back at stories I'd written. I'd written many short stories that, you know, they're not adult, adult in that way, but they're for a more mature reader, you know? And and I just felt like it would be a shame to never have those stories heard, to limit myself to one genre. And then I looked into it and I thought, well, you know, there's not really much of a market for short stories. So what do I do now? And I decided, well, I will convert them to scripts and I will make one and see what happens. And I started studying film on my own, you know, at the public library and 
I started volunteering to work on film sets and crews. So I was a production assistant for a feature film. And I did that basically as a spy, not to <laughs> get in their business. But so I could see, okay, I obviously know what a good story is. And I know what good acting looks like. But do I really know how it works? Do I know what all is involved and what all is necessary to create a film? So really, for me, it was more on-the-job training. And so I, I went and I did that for free several times just to make sure I really understood what exactly does the lighting technician do? What does the PA do? What does the script supervisor do? What does the first AD do? And to to get all of that down to where I felt really prepared to step into it. Um, so I went ahead and I, I hired a crew for my first film back in 2019. Um, it's a short, but it's kind of a longer short. It's about 25 minutes. It's called The Clandestine Lunch Life of Nina. Okay. <laughs> I know it's a mouthful. I'm already in. Yeah, but you're not going to find any other films with a title close that's to that. So right. that's a very specific. <laughs> I just loved it. Uh, and so your first one's 25 minutes long. Yes. And it is on, um, it's currently on two Roku channels. It's on one called Salt Flicks and one the, that's called the Creative Motion Network. How did you do that? Um, really, I, I find that when you treat people well, they do the same to you. Yeah. And so one Imagine. of the people that I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> one of the people that I worked with, you know, I was telling him, I've, I've got the film now and I just, I don't know what to do now. Like there's the film festival circuit and you can pay and enter all these film festivals. And I did. And, you know, we got a couple laurels and it's like, okay, but what do I do now? Now it just like sits here and it goes into oblivion or what happens. And so he actually had some connections with people on those two channels and told me, you know, there's no guarantee, but submit it to them and see if they will put it on their station. And so that's how that happened. And wow, um, his name is Theo and he's a wonderful uh, thank you, Theo. actor. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, you know, he's included me and my son on, on different projects since he's extremely talented and just a good person overall. Um, and then after that, um, once, you know, it was out there and I waited a little while and then I wasn't sure, you know, I was like, wow, that was, that's a lot of work. I don't think people realize that little five minute segment you saw how much budget it takes, how much manpower it takes, how yeah. much time it takes somebody to shoot something so small. Right. Do I really want to put myself through this again? And then I, I found there's a, a local film festival, um, slash contest called Rack Focus. So it's a rack focus competition. And I talked to another friend and he said, you know, you should just direct it yourself. I like, forget it. You take control of this and I'll be there and I'll help you and make sure you don't mess it up. And, I'm, and <laughs> thanks to his support, I, I said, okay, you know, what's the worst that can happen? I do a bad job, <laughs> but right. it's my film. So <laughs> whatever. This is your second one. This is my okay. second. So the first one I wrote and produced and, you know, helped make happen. The second one I wrote and directed, mm -hmm. um, which is called Pineapple. Now, part of the Rack Focus competition is all the films have to be under 10 minutes. Okay. So, 10 minutes or less, we were at like 9.59. <laughs> and including <laughs> credits. Editing. Uh, <laughs> yes. Good <laughs> editing. That's it. No, sorry, Brenda, you didn't make it. Thank you for your help with the <laughs> costumes. You're out. We had to cut it. Um, so, <laughs> we decided to enter and see what happens. And the, the great thing about that competition specifically is that there's so few regulations. So as long as everything is original mm -hmm. and everything is filmed, you can do all the prep work beforehand, but it can only be shot and finished and submitted within this 10-week period. Oh, wow. Um, yes. So <clears throat> if you fulfill that requirement, put it in on time, and everything's original, then you're in. And so then there's a screening. So as long as you're in, it gets screened during this competition, and at the end they do awards and everything. Um, so I did Pineapple, which is kind of a little psychological twist of a story, but it's about um, an immigration interview gone wrong. I am and so excited I can't tell you what the pineapple is for. <laughs> you That's have to okay. watch no, it. No, no, don't. No spoilers. <laughs> to know no spoilers. Why it's called pineapple? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I learned so much on that shoot that I immediately was like, "Well, we definitely have to enter the next round, right?" Right. So we went for it again the last round, and I had Mary, one of our newest members. And she, when was this? Uh, this just happened. Gosh, when was that? Jan. Jan oh, long ago. we were in Midland playing, yeah, performing. Yes, and my. <laughs> oh the, my God! Right before Odessa. Yeah. yeah. And, well, this was the crazy thing. The date of the screening happened to be the very next day after our performance in Midland. Yeah. Huh. And so I was like, oh no, that works. I'm going to miss the oh, screening it work. because we're six hours or five hours or however many hours it was away in Midland. How am I going to do this? But it was there. 
So the lovely Mayuri, who helped with makeup on the film, she said, I'll get up at three or four in the morning with you and drive back. And I was like, oh, my yeah. God, I love you. Thank you so much. So we drove back super early after a fun night <laughs> performance. <laughs> yeah, that, is, that was a fun trip. <laughs> it, it really was. We have to do that again. But we, so she and Maybe I drove back hot. still with the, like, we actually stopped in the middle of West Texas because the stars were so beautiful just to stare at it. And then we were like, okay, we got to get back on the road and not look like we're half dead. Yeah. And so we drove back on like three hours of sleep to make sure we were there for the screening of the more recent one that was called Surprise. And um, it's got a big cake. and Can't about, tell us anymore because it's a surprise. Um, it's also it's a very short film. about <laughs> a surprise party <laughs> with an unexpected twist. Okay. I like plot twists. Right. Um, so, yes, you can see that one, too. How long is that one? <laughs> that For that one, we won third place at the festival. Well, so. how, what's the duration of the ten, film? Ten minutes. Oh, okay. Exactly. Because <laughs> it's, it's the same one. Yep. Ten minutes on the dime. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Wow. And I'm actually about to, in July, we'll be filming for the next uh rendition of rack focus awesome um it is going to be called unrest and it is going to be a zombie comedy oh boy and i'm very excited about that because i love zombies <laughs> sounds like it has tyco in the background <laughs> it does I, hey we it can does. score it yeah, you want to score it sure <laughs> 10 minutes right <laughs> 10 minutes this is this yeah. it's a good workout <laughs> yeah no, i'm into i love horror uh soundtracks because of like what they do with generating sound mm-hmm it's so like all the all the scary movie noises that you hear are just regular drums and cymbals mm-hmm. with yeah. you know different materials yes. pulled across them and, and so yeah, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I'm I'm down for it. The for pineapple, um, the the soundtrack you can't really have a soundtrack for a ten minute film, but right. the the music in it is actually a single that I collabed with my friend Lottie. Mm-hmm. Um, who's another local Fort Worth musician. He's in a group called um, Iggy Meji okay. and Famous Exchange, and he's very, very talented. Um, so we did a two-person collab for a song called Exhale, and that's what I used for the intro in the film. So that was really cool because I got to participate in so many different aspects of, oh, of so cool. filmmaking. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. I, every and, time and I'm ten like, am weeks, I crazy? <laughs> ten weeks to... You you don't even have the story put together yet, do you? You can for that specific contest, you can have everything, but you can't start shooting. Okay. So you could wait till it begins and do all of that then. But you can have the story written. You can have your cast chosen. You can have your crew chosen. You can have everything set in stone. Yeah. You know, filming dates, as long as you don't start shooting before the start date. That's still pretty quick. Yeah. It. it Yeah, because you got to take a lot of that time for editing. It is, but what what I think is great about that one too is you see all of the ones that were submitted, and so you see this huge variety of stuff that you just didn't expect. You know, there's things where you say, "Wow, that was a great story," but you know, the sound wasn't great, or you know, "Oh, I love the the effects on this," but there wasn't much of a plot line. Like you, you really see every a little of everything and yeah. all kinds of genres. So it's just really, it's just really interesting. To see what people come up with, yeah. you know, and and where is this festival usually held? Is it always in Midland? Oh no, oh, no. that one's in Dallas. That was Dallas. Oh, uh, so oh, I had to oh, drive. Had to in yeah, 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 I right. had to drive all the way back. <laughs> and then y'all went to South by Southwest just yeah. this last this That'd year. March. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, March, and that was for the band. That had nothing mm-hmm. to do with indie filmmaking. No, that was that one. was us. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was yeah. Misagi. Yeah, y'all yeah. brought the, <clears throat> the the full caravan down there. All the equipment. Oh, that was crazy. Y'all were down there yes. for how many days? Uh, for zero days. Um. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a th- we we because it was we played on a Friday. Yeah, we played Friday night. Was it right? So like we all shot down to, there. We, yeah, we all raced yeah. down in separate cars. Damn. Um, we all took. We didn't take the trailer, right? Or did no. No, Mm-mm. well, so we vehicles. yeah yeah we just packed everything into different cars. This is a very common thing in Tyco groups because very few groups like have the money to like buy a trailer. Um, I've I've fronted. This is my baby, so I put a ton <laughs> of money into it. Right, like we're just now getting to the point where like, where we have money on the side to be able to like replace things. But yeah, yeah. I bought the trailer. Year. Yeah, the, yeah, I bought the trailer a year and a half ago, and that was just, I had to do it because mm. the drums were destroying my cars. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, we, we drove down there all at different times uh, to fight the traffic, park, unload mm-hmm. everything, repark. Mm-hmm. 
um, twice. I, was that, <laughs> I mean, if you've never been to South by in, in Austin, driving around is yeah. uh, not as bad as I thought it was going to be Dude. because Austin's terrible anyway. Yeah. I was about to say, I, <laughs> I've spent some time driving around Austin. Yeah. That alone is terrible. I can't yeah. imagine trying to... And it a was lot of actually, us hadn't been before. Like no, I hadn't been. I've never been to South by Southwest because I've been to Austin on a normal day, yeah. and, and that's I don't like driving, mm -hmm. so it can it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> frustrating. Um, but they actually had they had the traffic control. They kind of mm -hmm. had it figured they out. They had huh? it figured out. Yeah. It was it was surprisingly. I mean, you know, like I expected to sit in traffic. You sat in traffic, yeah. right? But it was managed really well kudos huh. to austin and south by like it, it was mm -hmm. really really well done that's good. Um, but we shot down there uh got there at like noon or one o'clock eight we didn't perform till nine mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. but like you have to have your stuff unloaded right be yeah. on site and ready be in the green room um, well, they call that load out yeah uh-huh yeah, it's a new load term in and you gotta oh. Yeah, load, check load in, in with your stage manager. Load yeah. in is getting it in. In right? the vehicle. The load, load out, out is, is out, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. And you got to stage your stuff. I'm learning yeah. I'm learning musical terms. <laughs> and, you know, we, we weren't even sure because, you know, South by Southwest is in one venue. It's many venues right. all over the city. And 50 something yeah. different venues. And we yeah. played at the Russian wow. house, but uh -huh. they had just changed the name, like, Oh, that week to so something else right. that I don't remember. It started with an N. Is it Na Nazdorovia? Yes. If I remember right, it's Nazdorovia. Your Russian is impeccable. I actually took three years of Russian. In oh, high okay. Yeah. So you you weren't putting it on. That, I think it, that that's real Russian you just did there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nazdorovia so there's a, there's another word that's very close. So now I'm confused as to whether or not I, I did it correctly. <laughs> nah, but they nah. changed the name because we, we all decided um, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> all yes. the listeners are like, no, that sounds legit. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> just the house now. Is it? Yeah. It used to be uh, Russian House Nazdorovia, mm. if I remember right. But but because of all the stuff with Russia invading yeah. the Ukraine. Right. Um, oh, God. Can you imagine yeah. that and being in Austin? Mm -hmm. Not a good yeah. mix. Yeah. And that was, that was <laughs> March. That mix. was spring break That week. was like So right. it was very recent in the beginning of, oh, of yeah, all that of that. Oh, yeah. It, it had only been a couple of weeks at that point. <laughs> Our name um, is Sunflowers now. <laughs> <laughs> That's but a cool little place. Yeah, it's yeah, cool it really place. was. Austin has some incredible spots, and it does. You, you know, it's it's drawn people from all over the country lately. Austin is just a hot spot. The cool. tech and, and the talent the, was all over the world. Like. Yeah, so one of the people that we played after mm -hmm. uh, uh, is a, a a band called Navicula. Mm -hmm. Um, N-A-V-I-C-U-L-A -A, and it's also the last name of mm -hmm. the, not the lead cough singer. Drum. <laughs> no, 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 it's Ricola. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Navicola. Um, and he was oh, from... It was it Indonesia? Yeah. I want to say it was Indonesia. But he... He was he, awesome. Oh, yeah, and he ended up playing a solo show. Yeah, for 40 um, minutes. For 40 <clears> minutes. <throat> but he was originally supposed to play with his whole band, but I think their visas expired. Their visas expired ahead of his. Oh, my um, God. And he had been here for for uh, a musical mm -hmm. um, festival Yep. that was... I don't think it was was in Austin. It was somewhere else. But they were like, well, right. we really want to do South by Southwest. And they, yeah. they put in for it and they got it. But then, yeah, the rest yeah, of his crew had to go back. And it's like a seven-piece yeah. group. They're really awesome. But he, wow. I mean, he held his own. He held the stage. He held the audience's attention. He must have had a bunch of friends and family there, too, because there were some passionate fans yeah. <laughs> there yeah. for him. And it was it was great. And he was so happy about it the whole time. Like, he was just thrilled to be there. And it was really nice to be around people who just you know again they were just living that moment they were just excited to be playing in south by southwest yeah. and after us um was it the argentinian group yeah mm -hmm. um, there was three piece no yeah. oh. yes there was okay yeah there was, there was, was the argentinian group there was a three piece a very small, very small space but then so, there was like the mm -hmm. eight piece oh yeah that yeah. was that was Eight individual artists mm -hmm. from from all over, from, like different places in South America, the Middle mm -hmm. East, India, yeah. playing uh, traditional instruments. Yes, I wish yeah, I could remember South, their name. I gotta go awesome. next year. South you know, by Southwest now that is an now that I've festival. been to it, like it's you book a place in advance. Mm. Um, yes, like like well like in yesterday. Advance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they'll help performers like find a place to stay. Yeah, yeah. But since we just were up here. And yeah, we just, we, we just down and back. Right. all had to At get two back. Two in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we all yeah. had other things to do. Between March <sighs> and April, we played probably once a week at least for like almost two months solid. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. That's why when we hit May, we were like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, well, we're taking the Nasher on the 20th. <laughs> yeah, we played at the Nasher. <laughs> mm -hmm. that was um, a, that's a nice venue. 
That was, and then we got really lucky that there was a photographer from KXT that was there. Um, was it uh, Jessica Waffles? It, it was. was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, I have been a recipient cool. of some of her um, generosity. She took some photos of us at the Psychedelic Panther. Lo- oh. Love Jessica Waffles. Yeah, yeah. She's, we'll she's have to give cool. her a shout out for this episode too because yes. she's yeah. she's kind of popping up all over yeah. the place she's she does the footwork yeah yeah she, she's, she's, everywhere. she's intertwined with the the music community mm-hmm. yeah so yeah it's so another that, one of the names that was our our last performance and then you we, know we somebody wanted to book us i think that day as well for something oh yeah I've, was well, that the smu one that we couldn't do because we were already booked that was remember. a monday yeah but i think we were there was, see, and that's we're the, old. that's 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 we're old. <laughs> we don't know. That's the, well, one of the difficulties is like there's seven of us now, yeah. so like there's four of us here, but we've picked up more people, and we just have mm. not uh, scheduled. It's really hot right now. We have not scheduled uh, <laughs> full that's, full that's dress up like right. photos for yeah. for everybody who's in the group now, um, and that's something we want to do, but mm. uh, because we all have like these very 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 with an e varied jobs um and as educators like we can't just be like yeah i'll take the day off right we'll go yeah. play on a monday at four in the afternoon at a college i would l- i would love to play everywhere that somebody asks us to play right. like i really would um because i love i love performing um despite the fact i have to move all of the stuff in and out of my house mom by myself yeah. but whatever that that's, part is that's neither here yeah. nor there. <laughs> we help with uh, the rest but that part yes yeah. is yeah. all the time but Damn. But it's just it's just hard to like do certain performances mm-hmm. during yeah. the week so but you got to manage those expectations right yeah. Yeah. yeah so where can people find you guys playing next or have i mean it sounds like you just told me that you don't have anything we scheduled don't have for the anything summer scheduled right yeah. now yeah. Open. <laughs> we are open <laughs> okay. so if you would like to book us please do um, where do they go to uh the best bet honestly uh we don't have a web page um we did we're on facebook switched to instagram instagram is the best way to get a hold of us because okay. i'm on it every day um or the email yeah we also. do actually have an email it's it's uh, goisagi.daiko at gmail.com so it's the same thing as our goisago our goisagi <laughs> that's, why, that's why I've had you say it several it times because I, I won't mess it up in the intro. G O I S A G I, and you can find that on Instagram. Just type that in. Nobody else has that name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yep. And then our our yeah. uh, our email is basically the same thing at gmail dot com. Perfect. So yeah. Just yes. shoot us a message and we'll get we'll see it pretty quickly. Yeah. And then yeah. y'all just mentioned that Sun. I don't know if you said y'all are still doing this but y'all are playing sundays in the mornings at the park every yep. sunday morning every nine to sunday. eleven what's the name of that park that's trinity park. trinity park the, the yeah. trick with that is Why trinity park is that? like five miles long right it's huge. <laughs> it's, pretty, yeah. it's massive it's, it's all over the place miles, but it's, it's huge but there's a gazebo just yes. if you're if you're coming off of i-30 onto university yeah, right uh-huh. mm-hmm. on the right hand side the first entry that you can take to the park yeah right across from the old japanese garden entrance yeah we're yeah. always yeah. there and then there's a there's a gazebo right around there. Yeah, we don't play in the gazebo anymore because we once we anymore. hit four people, we couldn't yeah. put men into it. <laughs> yeah, where I saw you guys, y'all were about uh, eh, maybe a quarter mile up from the gazebo. Yeah, not too far. Yeah, yeah. North, 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 just follow the, the sound. Yeah. Yes, you'll, you'll hear you'll them. Find us. <laughs> really, <laughs> we've had people honk at us while driving by. Oh, yeah. thanks. Yeah, because yeah, we're not making noises over here, <laughs> other than you know, yeah, yeah. horns. <laughs> Yeah, we've had all kinds of people come up. I think uh, last weekend there was a college group doing a call, oh. like a run, <laughs> and they came up and I, with I bananas too. Yeah. <laughs> they gave us, they gave us water because they were doing like a, a, <laughs> right. a mini marathon with yeah. like college students and their families and stuff. Have and some and potassium. That's actually very generous. It's actually very because helpful. they needed the potassium. <laughs> yes, you, you probably honestly, did too. You're yeah hammering yeah, the drum. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but oh, yeah, they brought us good. water and stuff too. <laughs> that's cool is that Westland <laughs> I think so I think they were from Westland parks are kind of cool <laughs> like that you know because you get people yeah. out and they're doing well, different things mm-hmm. and I I, w- I, I want my personal studio so that we can like do weekday stuff at night yeah. and not be in the sun all the time or in the dark um, but that's one reason that I'm not worried about it is because we've never we've had the police drive by us and be like hey and I'm like <laughs> what's up guy um, and we get all kinds of foot traffic just being out there. We get tips. Oh, we yeah. get tips. Like we have a, we have a, uh, like every two weeks, yeah, three weeks, same, we get, we get same a, lady. Yeah, a lady who travels a lot and she tips us. 
you know, and she bought one of our CDs. Now that I've met y'all, I am <laughs> so embarrassed that I didn't walk up to you that day <laughs> and go, hey, this is crazy what's going on. I'd like to have you on my show. We, but we get all kinds of people. Again, the universe, it worked. Yeah, so this is great. <laughs> it was supposed to happen. I can't thank y'all enough for doing this with me. Um, is there anything else that we need to cover before we get out of here? Yeah, so our CD uh, is actually on Spotify. So if you can find us on Instagram, you can find that on Spotify. Um, and of course, if you if you would like to purchase one, if you mm-hmm. still own a CD player, if you know what that <laughs> is, then buy. You know, just yeah. just give us a message and and yes, we'll slip one in the um, e- in the mail in the email. We'll slip one in the mail. If yeah. not, it isn't on all the major streaming services. So you yeah, know, Spotify. It's Apple also on Music. Apple Music and. Yep. Yeah. Get it that way too. And yeah. this is the best way to support an artist though is by buying a CD or uh downloading it off of uh Bandcamp or something like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. The streams that you, I'm sure the audience has heard me say this a million times or artists that I've had on the show, those streaming services pay like Pennies. a penny for every million downloads. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's and nuts. those aren't the exact number, folks, but it is ridiculous. <laughs> it it <laughs> comes out to uh, it's something like a th- thousandth of a penny per it's, listen it's really or ridiculous. something yeah, yeah. so well, who's the real winner yeah plus <laughs> if you get the cd you get sean's cool cover oh art yeah man i try and the interior art which um, if you pull out the cd yeah that's our logo that too, too. I, yeah I, the things i don't think about like, <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's good there's a good set. and see like people my age group we appreciate this kind of stuff <laughs> but uh and i i hope that this new generation gets on board with this because Downloads are not where it's at. Well, you know, no. vinyl was coming back. Like, there's vinyl a huge, still vinyl crowd. huge. And, yeah. and I would like to one day have a, a home that smells like rich mahogany <laughs> and a record player <laughs> and many leather bound vinyl records. Yeah. You know? And you, you can have that dream. <laughs> <laughs> I need it's that okay in my life. That yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. It, I think it's uh, vinyl has very much picked up like uh, uh, craft coffee. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. People, people want to spend the money on the sound yeah. and yeah. It, on the on did the quality of experience instead yeah. of the, just the caffeine it's you know? the experience i mean yeah. streaming services are starting to kind of seem like blood diamonds so mm. i think people are getting away from folgers and going for like homebrewed coffee you know yeah. what i mean mm-hmm. exactly <laughs> yeah you know technology you know talking about like what what had to change with with covid and stuff um <clears throat> being my age uh and having grown up pre youtube pre all of this um, pre-streaming, there there was there was the a tendency for people to be like, no, this is going to be so bad for everything, Napster, um, you yeah. know, and all of that. And then, you know, we pushed as a populist stealing music or as a populist like demanding things in a certain way, oh. uh, like the industry industry had to catch up and it did so now we have streaming services and now they found a way to you know to push the pendulum back way the other way it's, yeah. you know, yes. it's like oh we have all this great music for you that we don't really pay artists for um, yeah. and etc but now you can download the one song you want off the album and never know what the rest of the album mm-hmm. sounds like right yeah. so yeah. so every time we have this technological kind of revolution in how we're doing things there's, there's a big push and pull um, and you know for people our age like we want to know what the rest of the the cd sounds like and for yeah. artists like wanting to know what people are doing like you have to have the album because an artist doesn't write you know 13 songs in this case six uh and put it on an album randomly right like they pick the six or seven that are going to go on there and in an order in a very specific order right. so that the experience from start to finish is its own thing that's what an album is an album's yeah. not just a bunch of stuff thrown together i mean and so like streaming kind of hurts that way too because people are like oh i like this song but i don't really care about the rest of these people yeah. you know rest yeah. of their work and it's like well then you don't you're not a music listener yeah. <laughs> you know like like I Every, say, everything we're not marketing has, to you, buddy. <laughs> Every, everything has become now that's music, whatever edition. And weren't those the the CDs oh, that came out yeah, every year? Yeah, yeah. Like one they song. still use one of, song. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they 35. do. Thirty five. Yeah, now Jurassic we're Park, ninety five thousand. <laughs> Poor Jurassic Park. Yeah, I, don't I mean, there's know. so many other movies. I'm so <laughs> upset. No, that's the one I'm upset about today. <laughs> This is Transformers for me. Transformers. Oh, oh come on. Mark Wahlberg was no, in one. God. He was in two of them. Yeah, yeah, the first one I was I was like, oh my God, this looks amazing, right? You know, because they marketed it so well. Oh. And then I got in there and I was like, this is 
this is not this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get my, embarrassed. The, yeah. the thing I noticed about, and I, I didn't know this until well after I'd watched Transformers, and I'm like, I don't know why I can't handle this, but none of this is like registering. And then I saw uh, Spider-Man, which are the most recent one with Doctor Strange. Oh, uh, the multiverse. Uh, that one? yeah, that one. No way home or yeah, no way home. Is that right? Yeah. Huh? And uh, right. that that scene that he's spoiler alert um, when he's fighting Doctor Strange. There's all this crazy stuff going on. Things are everywhere. There's geometric patterns, and you don't know which way's up. Gravity doesn't make sense, mm-hmm. and it's just a lot. Mm. But you're able to absorb it and enjoy it because they slowed it down just enough with the brain. <laughs> yeah. Now, Transformers <laughs> happened <not>. so quickly. <laughs> you're like, what was that? Yeah. I mean, it's on a huge screen and it's a billion frames per second just going yeah. way too fast. And uh, I, I didn't realize that. Talking about the way people create uh, movies mm. and the cinematic journey or whatever, but it's it's just... These little things matter. Yeah, well, mm. one of the my brain can't absorb that. Yeah, well, and, <laughs> yeah. and there's okay. Well, and before we even started shooting this, we were talking about like uh, Instagrams uh, and TikToks like pushing to the seven second format. Oh yeah, and I don't even. Yeah. I heard that from a kid like on the last day of school or something um, you know, two <laughs> weeks ago. Stuck and with I was you. Like, it's been keeping I, you up at night. When I was like, <laughs> "What are you talking about?" Right, and then so I'm on Instagram, you know doom scrolling or whatever and and i'm like oh that's really interesting video of you know steel work or something and it was like seven seconds it's like where's the where rest? is this going yeah like, like look this piece of metal is spinning and this thing's cutting it and then it starts over and then it's and you're like yeah the, this is so short attention span dude, theater it's insane that's a little psychotic isn't it it's nuts mm-hmm. so yeah. i noticed that on uh <coughs> facebook reels which i've never done before i've never even looked at them ever that's apparently a thing and then i want (laughs) to say over the last couple of weeks i was scrolling through facebook and i'm like "Ooh, that's cool what's that doing and then it would start and it would stop and i'm like i guess that's it yeah (laughs) back to not paying attention to that i'm not gonna i'm yeah like i because there were like six other videos i could have clicked on i'm like not this time yeah i already saw what you're gonna try to do to me it's (laughs) it's really wacky because um you know the the idea that that the thing that people click on the most is the most like Whoa, there's sparks shooting everywhere bright yeah. colors half naked people you know like like they want you to click on as many things as mm-hmm. possible so the shorter you get them and like it plays into this sh- our yeah. short attention span like I will yeah. like kids will do that mm-hmm. you know and kids mm-hmm. are on their phones all the time mm-hmm. um, and so like that's the biggest market it's not really people our age but like people our age. Like I get on Instagram so uh-huh. that I can watch somebody make a knife in a forge for a minute or six. Right. right. Like I uh-huh. will. Or I will jump go. on YouTube and watch a twenty-minute video. Yeah, I will yeah. do that. Yeah. If I have the time, I'll do that. It's kind of scary. But the seven-second video yeah. doesn't show you anything. It tells you nothing. It's just a click. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's kind of like storytelling. Like you don't have to have a story that's a thousand pages long or a hundred or ten. You have to tell it in the length that tells the best story. Yeah. And and seven seconds is not going to tell oh, a story very well for anybody. Yeah. It's just going to be a bleep. You know, yeah. that's all it is. Is a little blip in the matrix, and then you're out. But you, if you have a purpose when you're watching, like I'm trying to learn about this, or that's I want to know more about this artist, or what's happening in the world today, you need more of a story than that. Yeah. You know? I was watching a, uh, a a mega yacht, and they were trying to get it under a a bridge. And apparently, it was sitting just a little too high in the water that day. <laughs> but whenever it finally got to the point where it was just barely starting to contact the bridge, this is where the fun starts, right? Yeah. The video ended. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> it's Damn. unreal. Yeah, it's where unreal. do I go to find the rest of this? Well, there's no link. It was just that, and you click on the details. It goes, wow, with yeah. lots of O's. Yeah, those are de- okay, those are great. like <laughs> those are like bot accounts or like people's accounts or literally, literally oh i'm sorry they're literally that was apparently very difficult to say it's pretty they cool. are, i like how you did that <laughs> yeah i can't i didn't think i could i don't think i, could I don't know how that. you handled that but that was um, amazing they like those accounts just like repost so they go and they steal people's stuff and then they change it 
they cut a little bit off or put or my my favorite is they put the really terrible music that Instagram makes available for your videos like if like you know it's it's the little baby screaming noise music I don't know. oh see, like, I I get on Instagram <laughs> with no volume I don't want to hear I usually do too yeah. and, until it's one of the local podcasters like what they say Yeah exactly <laughs> what are they doing If somebody is spending <laughs> or if it's t- if it's music like you know we have our Instagram I will go on there and I will listen to like right. everything that everybody is doing out there um, because it's all Tyco related uh, but if I'm doom scrolling and looking at videos silent because invariably it's not the sound of the rain that's falling it's some ridiculous mm. song you know, that has nothing to do with it. It's like a rap song. It's like, oh my God, what does this have to do with rain falling in the Middle East? You know, or yeah. like, it's just, it's so odd and disjointed. They just put it on there to get as many clicks as possible. And it's mm-hmm. not really, it's not relevant. It's not, it's not, uh, not choreographed. It's not um, curated. Yes. It's not curated. curated. Yeah. Nobody's sitting there taking this, this video of this rainfall in in the Middle East and putting, something maybe, meaningful yeah too. yeah you know it's <laughs> like maybe music from that area you know that actually fits that hey it's we're just along for the ride yeah <laughs> it's, such a, it's, such a mess. it's a great tool it's a great tool it can but be. it's not it's not life and that's what i yeah. have to remind people of sometimes okay but it's it's not life like get off of it and go live your life yeah. go do something that's worth posting about right, right. I don't need to know why you chose the shirt you chose this morning. I don't need to know a chafer. I don't need to know 90% of what's on there. I don't care. Yeah. But if you can make me care about something, if you can tell me something impactful or show me something exciting, that's worth my time to watch. Right. You know, and I love that you called it doom scrolling. I'd never heard that before. Oh, you've never heard that? that? I've no. heard it, but that I, came up during, yeah. during COVID because people didn't, like didn't know what to do with themselves. Mm-hmm. They were trying to find a way to entertain. feel better yeah. or entertain themselves or like stop feeling what they were feeling or dealing mm-hmm. with what they were dealing with. But then it became doom scrolling because like that's all people would do. Yeah. And and for us sitting behind a screen all the time, it was definitely doom scrolling because then all you do is you switch to the screen and it, a, a different screen, right. you mm-hmm. know? And it was, yeah. I, I had to, you know, I'd throw my phone, try to yeah. get rid of it because it was just so much well, i have a uh, appreciation for those apps that track your social media use and probably everybody should have something because you don't know they're built to trick you oh to suck mm. you in big time yeah, <coughs> yeah. and i yeah. i know for a fact that i spend way too much time on mine <laughs> so <laughs> me too I, i'm sure everybody i think we all do something yeah. i tried to do before uh before i get away from people on these episodes is uh ask you what your favorite places are in fort worth do you have a oh yeah? Do you have a favorite oh. restaurant in Fort Worth? Yeah. Oh gosh. My favorite restaurant, that. Sushi Tao. Where's this? That is off of. It's in between. God, I don't want to say it's Overton Ridge. It's on Overton Ridge. Is that right? I can never remember what cross street it's on, but right next to Hewlin Mall, in between Hewlin mm. and um, in between Br- uh, not Brian Irvin. Yeah. Okay. But it's 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 more on the Hewlin side. Um, is it over there by uh, Movie Trading Co.? I think so. It's right next to uh, There's like a Kung Coles Fu Tea. Oh, that's on the other side of the street. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's on the north side. Um, okay. It's literally that that first um, first mini mall just past Hewlin Mall. Good sushi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like the best yeah. in town. Yeah. And then Oni. Oh, it's not Oni that. Ramen anymore. It's it's a uh, Quintaro Ramen. Is it off of Seventh? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so good. Right there on, on Foch Fox Street. Street, yes. Um, I, <laughs> Not to I, be confused with anything else. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I, uh, I, I ate there last weekend after a, a really intense workout at BMF Body Machine Fitness. Uh-huh. Have you ever been there? No. Uh. <laughs> you can check this did, place did out. Did you have the spicy ramen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't even remember what I had. I walk in there every time and I have to stare at the menu and I'm like, I think it's that one. And he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> and he's like, "Do you think you'd like that?" I'm like, yeah. He's like, "Okay." And yeah, there's nothing bad on the menu. I always pick the same thing, but it takes me a while, and I get really stressed out because I'm like, I don't want to get the wrong thing, but it's always good. Yeah, it's so it's just. But I forgot. Yeah, it used to be called something else. It was Oni. Oni. Yeah, Demon Ramen. Yeah, yeah. they nice. still have. It's it's still. Mm-hmm. 
I think it changed hands. I'm not sure what the story is. I don't remember. Um, still delicious. Yeah, and it's <laughs> mostly exactly the same menu, and they still have all the different spicy levels. I think that's going to be my tradition, though. Go work out on a Sunday, then go eat ramen. Just be Which careful with the spicy level, because <laughs> there's a lot of places... Oh, I told him. I was like, no spicy. Okay, then no, no, no spicy. Yeah, no, no, no. Because I, I love... I grow my own peppers and stuff. Like, oh, I Jesus. love spicy stuff, right? Like, habanero. <laughs> like, I'll grow that at home, and See, I'll, I'll eat it. Where, where people know? are <clears throat> afraid to go to people's houses that have cats, I don't know that I could go to your house. <laughs> Because I am like, I have to blow on mayonnaise to cool oh, it. I, I don't do spicy, man. No, I love spicy stuff. In my younger years, yes. Yeah. But like something happened around 32, and I'm like, oh my God, what did that do? Yeah, no, I, I understand that. Because it happened to me too, but I still love it. And there's there's a ton of places that I'll go, and they'll be like, oh, it's really spicy. And be like, look, just listen to what I said and give me what I want. I got this, Jack. <laughs> yeah, and then I get it, and it's like, this isn't spicy at all. Give me the chopsticks. Walk away. <laughs> well, so like I'll go to Thai places, and I'll I'll you know weigh up the number scale, and they're like, are you sure about that? I'm like, yes, yes, I am. And then I'll get it, and I'll be like, I should have ordered one higher. Oni, <laughs> so, or Quintaro, they have like five levels of spicy. Mm -hmm. I've never been able to get past the middle one because it's, yeah, it's intense. So that's why you're peppers, giving me the warning, yeah, I'm right? I'm giving you the warning now. Like, Quintaro is <laughs> well, really good. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the guy was like, so how spicy do you want it? And I was like, if it's spicy at all, you will have to, like, carry me out in a bag. <laughs> like, yeah, I can't don't. do spicy. He's like, okay, there's not going to be any extra spice. It might be too spicy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he looked yeah. He looked a little wordy. I was like, I think I'll be all right. Yeah, because it, <laughs> like, it goes from, like, mild to medium to hot to something else to Oni, <laughs> which is, like, right? And, and so, like, when you get to the middle one, or like medium, it has ghost pepper in it. Oh God! Yeah, no, yeah. no, yeah. That's no, where no. it's. Yeah, okay. I know, right? So like, I don't even know. There, I, I know there's Carolina Reaper, and this is in you know, the, <laughs> in a the, food. This is brothy, right? Uh -huh. What if you like let a noodle go too fast and you splashed yourself in the eye? Oh. Yeah, no, you're gonna feel it. <laughs> oh my yeah. God! Trust me. I love that. That was your fear. <laughs> well, that scenario. it's happened. <laughs> well, because well, like, it shoots up your nose and it hits your like soft. I'm issues. not really worried about how bad this would hurt because I would never eat that. But I could see me like doing something yeah. stupid. And, oh my God! It's in my well, eye. Like, sears your flesh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's intense. You could go blind from that. There are very few places I've ever ever been to where I had something that was so spicy I didn't think <laughs> I could finish it. Damn. Yeah, and this is one of those places. It's totally worth going to. Because okay. you can get it without the spices. And and that's that's really why good. you use chopsticks, folks, because you <laughs> don't want a refurbished fork from <laughs> anybody that had the Oni before you. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case the Don didn't get it all off. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've given you some time to think. Did you oh. come up with a good Fort Worth restaurant? No, because I was listening. <laughs> 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 Since I, I live in Grand Prairie, I'm mm -hmm. usually in Grand Prairie in Arlington yeah. eating. Have you been to Campo Verde in Arlington? That sounds familiar. My parents used to live in, in Arlington. Where's okay. it located at? Oh, gosh. I have to look. It's, That's it's okay. It's like West Arlington, but um, near the Pantigo area where it's called Pantigo. Yeah, so my mom drove buses for the Pantigo School District, oh. so I think we were probably over there. What's the name of it again? Campo Verde. It's it's weird. I, I'm i not sure if I would say is the it on Cooper is like the or best Colin? ever, but um, I have to look. I think it's Cooper. So I use my GPS for everything. I'm Cooper, lost everywhere. Coop, Cooper and Colin <laughs> run See, like that's, this. That's so why I, he laughs. I don't. I don't know my way around yeah. anywhere. Period. I think I know what you're talking about, yeah, and I think it was one of my favorite Mexican restaurants. It's like Christmas vomited everywhere, and that's the decor. They have a huge patio. Oh my! Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know exactly that place. Yes, I have. Oh been yes, there. it's so overstimulating to it the mind. Very, and there's a train that's running around the whole restaurant, oh, which is I am entertaining. Talking about a totally different place. No, this but is I know what you're literally talking about. Christmas all yeah. year. It's I've heard like, about this. Yeah. It's hard to explain in quiet words. Okay. Well, I will look it up. I'm going to add it in the show notes, both of your restaurants. I'm going to put those in the show notes, and I'm going to have to go try them out. Yes. But I know I've heard about your place, and I've, well, we just agreed that we like that ramen over there. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to check out the yeah, sushi Kitaro. over there by Movie Trading Sushi Town. I mean, uh -huh. if you want, if you want the music connection to that place, I, I found out about it because I read that it was... You know, whether you like Pantera or not, but it was Dimebag Daryl's oh, favorite restaurant. Really? That's and I was hilarious. Like, yeah. Really? Wow. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, what? How like have I never heard of this Favorite in Arlington place? or favorite ever? That's what I I mean, said. one way or another. We will get to the bottom <laughs> of this. I said, let's go That's see intense. what this is about. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's, it's like, whoa. <laughs> like, you don't even know where to look, see. 
Yeah. yeah. Wear sunglasses. It's that much. Oh, going really? On. Do you <laughs> need shades? Really? <laughs> Every <laughs> inch is covered in Christmas lights <laughs> and Christmas tinsel. Lights and yeah. tinsel and the yeah. train. And yeah, like it's just hard to even comprehend until you go in there. Damn. And I think it's Mexican and Italian food. It's Tex Mex and like Italian. It's Mex, yeah. 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 I guess that works. I mean, it's it's unique. I, I it's I get a, I had, unique. I get a <laughs> frijole in know. my angel hair pasta. I'm going to have questions. <laughs> it's it's a trip. Um, favorite coffee, though, is, is definitely uh, Ampersand. Yes. Okay. They know mm-hmm. me. I go there every Sunday good morning choice. before practice. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. They have a very good Vietnamese iced latte. Uh, I've, I had a, uh, some friends over in Plano uh, school me up on coffee and how Folgers is the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to be drinking stuff that's made from like a, a locally sourced, like yes. non uh, slave trading oh. coffee maker. Look up, do yourself a favor and look up the idea. And I didn't know this until Jay framed it for me. Uh, third wave coffee. I'll look it up. So yeah, this isn't a, co- it's not a company or anything. It is the, it is the fair trade, like, sourced like locally sourced or um fair sourced or i can't remember whatever yeah yeah and it's it's all the the craft coffee um trade and and uh um Apparently, roasting that's that's happening just like yeah. just like a craft beer like exploded mm-hmm. yeah. craft coffee has exploded like all the way down to it's like how how the individual coffee shop where they like which family they get their coffee from, how they roast it in house to make their own thing, how they, you know, source how their bored are we? <laughs> <laughs> But I think this goes back to the technology thing though. It's like what I was talking about earlier. It's like every time technology goes up a notch, right? So like with the internet you could get like with, when YouTube was born, it was like, oh, here's a bunch of like, you know, funny stuff. But like it became the craft person's go to. Mm. Mm. I can learn how to make anything that's true right you know yeah. and 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 just like tv DIY, was like, baby. yeah everybody was like well, well tv is so full of junk i was like but there was a point in time and there still is there still are science channels mm-hmm. and the learning channels not really <coughs> like that anymore but you yeah. know there are channels that you can get where you can learn these great things and and finally the technology the cost of technology to to grind your own coffee to brew to brew <laughs> uh to uh 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 Cook your own coffee. What the heck? Roast your own coffee. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. No, you you got it. Yeah, you beat us all there. <laughs> Eventually, um, that the cost on all that has come down over the years, and so the technology is finally within the hands of the people to to like finally return the art of this mm-hmm. stuff to us and to people like us instead of Folgers, Maxwell House, the big the big dog, God Brothers Coffee. Well, <laughs> dude, I yeah. see. Just on a tangent, I see like <laughs> coffee commercials for like brothers and 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 there's another one, and um, and they're like, oh, it's you know the people's coffee or whatever. It's it's everybody's favorite coffee. And it's like no man, it's it's the coffee that you get when you get your tires changed. <laughs> <laughs> like it comes in bulk. Yeah, yeah, that's where you make <laughs> your money. Don't tell me that like you are you know single sourcing your whatever. Mm. It's not good. <laughs> Like, well, no. uh, we'll make sure we have some excellent coffee for you next time. <laughs> yes. Some, uh, some. It, I'm, I'm glad y'all were IPA fans because it was either that or White Claw. Definitely so. an IPA fan. Okay, <laughs> definitely. I'll try to remember craft, that next craft time. Craft brew guy. Andrew, put that in the show notes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank y'all again for being here. Can we thank get you, you back on Fort Worth Roots in the future? Oh, absolutely. Sure. And yeah. please let me know next time you're going to play because I'd like to come out, see you absolutely. live. Yeah. Hold definitely. the camera, even if it's a. Are y'all doing it this Sunday? Are y'all going to be for out there practice? at the park? Oh yeah. 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 Uh-huh. I might yep, come day after take tomorrow. a video. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> come say hi. Uh, take a picture with the whole group. Is everybody going to be there? Uh, as far as be. I know. I've yeah. Been, yeah. Should be everybody. Okay. All seven of us. Nine o'clock. Yep. All right. And this is every Sunday, so every you might Sunday. get some stalkers now. Ah. Perfect. <laughs> they might say, okay. hey, well, we heard oh, you on yeah, Fort Worth Roots. Yeah, we, we have a couple of different people that are always around. That's cool. That's <laughs> cool. Waving at us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all again. Let's get out of here. And uh, Fort Worth Roots listeners, thank you all. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. A huge thank you to our new friends, Kenna Sosa and Sean Ibanez. Thank you all for being on the Fort Worth Roots podcast. Looking forward to having you guys out again. Like I said uh, during the intro, if you are watching the YouTube video, 
you got to see the little video of uh, our interaction today. I was in the middle of editing, and I'm like, damn, it's Sunday. Why don't I run out there and catch a video? Very cool stuff. Um, if you don't watch my YouTube video, go to theirs. You can go to YouTube, type in G-O-I-A, excuse me, G-O-I-S-A-G-I dot D-A-I-K-O into the search bar, and it'll pull it up. I got lots, lots of great content. Way better videos than the one I shot today, but this one was cool because they're out there practicing on the river. Nerds are running by on bicycles and running the trails and dogs and squirrels and cars and just a lot going on for a practice area. But they need space for all these big, big drums. What else? Thank you to our sponsors. Darren Houck with Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck. Wood Post Metal Wood Post Metalworks, and of course, Hauk Walker Originals. Thank you all for being sponsors of the Fort Worth Roots Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, please mark this on your calendar. It's your big thank you event, September 10th out at Pouring Glory. It's just one block east of uh, Main at Southside off of Main Street. And uh, it's a great venue. And Scott has been super nice helping me get this thing planned and put together for you. Uh, we're still coming up with ideas. We want this thing to be next level. So... Um, and then I think we're going to keep doing stuff with uh, Scott and his team over there at Pouring Glory. It's just, it is a great little venue, uh, kind of tucked off um, in a great area. But if you're driving down Main Street, you would never see it because it's, it's kind of, yeah, a block off of Main. But only the cool kids know where it is. And that's where we're going to be September 10th with you. So please mark it on your calendar. It's 1 to 6 p.m. The weather's going to be great. I know it's going to be great. And um, we're just going to keep putting stuff together like this in the future, too. This is, uh, you know, the, the reason or the excuse we're doing this is the 100th episode release. We made it to 100 episodes. What's that mean? That eh, doesn't mean a whole lot, but 100 episodes is uh, it's pretty substantial. It's, it represents a lot of work. So might as well. This was uh, an idea from somebody else. They're like, what are you going to do for your 100th episode? And uh, I didn't have a really good answer. So... Now the answer is September 10th out at Pouring Glory. We're going to be taking a big picture, big group picture for everybody, and it's going to become kind of the headline for Fort Worth Roots. It's going to be on everything. So if you want to be a part of that too, make sure you come on out. And I am trying to make sure that we've got uh, all sorts of good stuff in our grab bags for you. One of those things that we're working on is t-shirts, but they are expensive. So we are looking for sponsorship to put names of companies on the back of the shirt so that... Uh, I don't go broke. <laughs> All right. That's enough talking out of me. Thank y'all for listening to another episode of the Fort Worth Roots podcast, and I will see you next week. Peace. Peace.